Stand by. Go. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. Yeah. This group, but I see it over here. It's not, it's not, it's heavier and it's drooping. Mm -hmm. It's in my mind at the time, it was, well, there's something going on. Yep. And I, I am prone to say, okay, they sprinkle a little more elvish <laughs> magic on that version. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good one. Yeah. But what I saw was consistently gun after gun after gun. Right. I knew what I had to do was get the gun in, yep. get it set up on the back end the way I wanted it, right. and then find out which one. And we all talk about which, which pellet does a barrel like and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Well, this this is that kind of thing. For twenty-one thousand dollars in first place, with a score of two twenty-eight, with ten X's, ten X's, Keith Gibson. It's 100% crucial. It's so absolutely, absolutely crucial. Um, you have to have the best consistency out there. You have to keep that hold. If you decide on a light hold, cool. If you decide on a heavy hold, just as cool. But you have to keep it as solid as possible at all times. It has to be the same, right? It has to be the same. And you have to practice that. Hide the right above the head. So the Monster Design Power Wheel was actually in design before the M3 came out, and it's a 16 position um, hammer spring as well. So instead of it going two different lobes on either side, it's just one big lobe. Oh, instead of having, yeah, like with the, the original one, what did people find? Yeah, this, yeah. One, this one's just like the new M3, it went all the way through. And, and so you get a little bit more finer, you have 16 adjustments now compared to the old 10. And you're not having to go to the other side to get the tweener yeah you can just you got yeah, this kind of disc, second yeah, you can just go right up and yeah. that is a deal breaker on the bench rest yeah we're gonna make them freeze until you're killing me Steve <laughs> it's gonna move no he's buffering <laughs> probably is a good time to let you know I'm taking video oh are you really <laughs> The re we're in 25 caliber right now. Um, Ted, Ted Beer, uh, a while back, a few years back, he went on this 25 craze. How good the 25 is, it's so much better than 30. Uh, he went to EDR and won it with the 25 caliber, right? Um, really, really big on that. There's something special about the 33 grain, 25 caliber. Okay. So what we did in preparation for our Mac is we went out and we shot the 30 cals next to the 25 cals. We had a 30 cal crown, 25 cal crown shooting the same speed. Strong preparation, by the way. We, we, <laughs> we had impacts, same thing, testing these different these different guns, and not right. so much groups, because we could shoot a half inch group at 100 yards, right, with the right conditions with mm -hmm. both guns. Mm -hmm. But when you're shooting at a target and scoring, there was something magical about this pellet and this chassis hmm. that just came together. Hold on. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Please pause, I'm letting my hand go. I'm sorry, pause, I thank our sponsor. <laughs> uh, every projectile has its specifics on wind drift, and wind drift in bench rest is the main thing you got to know and to handle with. I know this projectile perfectly. At uh, velocities, it's about uh, 970 hits per second. 970? Yeah, 970. Okay. They're all writing that down at home. 970. <laughs> Open up the front rack. 140 on the back. <laughs> yeah. All right. This is round two of three. Shooters, are you ready? Yes. Ready. Spotter, are you ready? Spotter, ready. Stand by. Fire. Back right. Back right. Back right. Back right. I'm going at about 9.27. With the, with the, what pal? With the FX 25.8 uh, grain uh, 
pellets. And then on the slugs, I'm using the Nielsen 24.8. Range is still cold. We got a fixed and camera. And I'm getting uh, at about 960 with a lighter uh, slug on it. But I'm getting very nice uh, heat groupings on it. Interesting. As well. Out to what distances? Uh, out to 100 yards. Awesome. Why two? Can you want to turn your gun kind of? Why two bottles instead of one? What's that all about? Two is better than one. Sixty-five, two pigs. Okay, the shooter understands the force of fire. Shooter ready? Somebody on the iPad? Stand by, engage. Impact. Impact. Seventy-three, two turkeys, got to move. Do you run it to make it quieter, or do you run it to give you a performance advantage or something? Uh, oh, strictly performance. I, I could care less at how loud it is. Cool. And okay, so this behind it? Uh, that's the new uh, barrel turn, uh, barrel tuner effect from FX that Chris Turk and uh, FX got okay. together and, and uh, got it going. And I'm, I must say, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. Chair here, so I'm down. Yeah. Having camera. So for me, I'm here, and then just like that, I'm shooting. It's very slick. You're right here. You saw I made a mistake right there, so yeah. I know I can just oh, and fix it and correct an error. You know what's interesting about this is if you have a mechanical air gun, okay. You need this. You need all of this leverage, and you yeah. need that drop down arm up here to do this. But with this, this guy, where this is, this is the cocking stroke. That's it. It's so cool how they can move this back. They should just build it like that. That's cool. Thinking, I got six interviews, they're like 15 20 minutes each. If I did nine, that would probably make a two hour vid plus B roll, so two and a half hours. I was gonna do 12, but I think nine's gonna be good. <clears throat> yeah, well, I just started. We're late, everybody looks cold. Everybody from Florida and Texas looks cold. Thank goodness for you wearing jackets this year. I know. That's cool. That is, you know how, the, you know you're saying it's like a drought out here? That's the difference. I don't remember all this dust and silt last, last time. Oh, we get our same spot as yesterday. Whoa, splat. AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi. Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&N Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Seven hundred is to bolt on one hundred and fifty. As this, I feel like I could do a one-handed, and I could still. As always, Cecil, Operations Manager for Hot Sun. I've done a full tuning guide on this on my 8010. Granted, we're talking a 25 yard cup. Ooh, I am surrounded by excellence this morning and it is freezing, <laughs> but class is in session. We are going to talk tuning and teach you guys gobs so on my left i have pj clark of wisconsin air gunner if you don't know his youtube channel check it out lots to learn there on my right is chris turk up north air gunner another guy that can teach you lots i'm here to learn hopefully you guys are too so um let's just get right into it so what we have here in front of us guys is an fx impact m3 and you are actually looking at a finalist 100 yard gun 
PJ on my left here made it into the 100 yard finals. He's going to be shooting here in a couple of hours yep. and he's very generously agreed to take us through his rig and his setup. But before we dive into all that, I want to touch a little bit on yeah. you guys so that they have some context on who you are. Sure. Now, for me, on a personal level, these are a couple of the smartest guys. And I don't mean that like I'm blowing sunshine up their hiney. I mean, some people just get kind of get air guns on a higher level. And that's who this is here. So this is really a great opportunity for us to uh, pick them apart yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and learn their deepest, darkest secrets and apply it to, uh, oh, you to our say, air gun. You didn't say dark secrets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dark, oh, dark secrets. Dark secrets. No, we're going to save those. <laughs> yeah. So let me kick it off. There, there's been a recent claim to fame for the two of you guys, and it has to do with a recent partnership you've struck in with FX yep. where you guys came up with the harmonic barrel tuner, which is now OEM equipment built and constructed by FX and offered to you guys as a factory component. And so, and it's been, it's profound. And we're gonna get into <laughs> what it means to you guys as a tuner and what it'll mean to me going forward as a tuner. But can you guys just sure. kind of shed some light on that story? Cause yeah. it's not every day that you come up with a toy yep. where, a fa where a manufacturer like FX goes, hell yeah, <laughs> and doesn't steal it from yeah. you, but says, right. let's work together sure. and make that awesome. Absolutely. So I'll give you guys the floor and shut up for a So, few. you know, PJ and we've been buddies online for years now, yeah. right? And we're always, you know, geeking out, you know, talking about these, I've tried this, this is what happened. Yep. And so, you know, coming from the big bore side of things, I had done a lot of stuff with like um, harmonic tuning using like those deresonating donuts and things like that, moving them along the barrel. And I think it was like, I don't know, it was like the spring or summer of like last year or two years ago, PJ had started doing some testing with using different size of Donny FL suppressors. Yeah, if and, I can comment on that. Yeah, absolutely. Every time I get a new rifle in, um, I have, you know, a box of, of Donnie's. Yep. And I will take each one out that's caliber correct, because yep. you know, that's yeah, a whole other thing. <laughs> but I will, I will set it up on the back end, right? It's shooting near, at or near the velocity I want. Yep. And then I shoot it without a moderator. Yep. That makes my wife the least happy. <laughs> <laughs> that Not that FX guns are super loud, but you know, some of the other guns I have are. Then I'll put one on, shoot groups. And the trick is you have to shoot groups far enough that you can start seeing differences, yeah. but not so far that even small fluctuations in wind, yeah. you know, I don't have a wind tunnel to shoot in. So uh, my range is, is pretty sheltered because it's in the woods, um, so I don't get tons of wind. Yep. But if I went out, you know, on a 15 mile an hour day in Wisconsin, which is you know nearly gale force, right. um, it would it would throw off your results. So you have to have that part. Yep. Like how and far are we talking? I'm, I usually go between 50 and yep. 65 yards. Okay, yep. that's, like the, that's the that's the sweet zone because like you know any far, farther out you got the environmental impact right. and stuff. So, and yeah. I will say if I'm doing a 22, I'll bring that back to about 30, 35 yards. Mm. So 25 and 30, I'm going out a little farther. Yeah. Because then you really start to see things. So what I noticed was if I put on say the FX branded one moderator. Yep. You know, here's the group, and I'm not saying that's this. Just take this for what's worth. This, this, this is, is gun, tuning. This is tuning. This is gun specific, right? Mm -hmm. So I might see this group, and then I put on a sumo, and not only do I see this group, but I see it over here. It's not. It's not. It's heavier and it's drooping. Mm -hmm. It's in my mind at the time. It was well. There's something going on, yep. and I. I am prone to say, okay, they sprinkle a little more elvish <laughs> magic on that version, yeah. Yeah. and that's a good one. Yeah. But what I saw was consistently gun after gun after gun. Right. I knew what I had to do was get the gun in, yep. get it set up on the back end the way I wanted it, right. and then find out which one. And we all talk about which, which pellet does a barrel like and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Well, this this is that kind of thing. Can so I, can I speak to that yeah, for a second? For so when I review guns for you guys and I'm picking a moderator to host on that gun in that series of reviews, I'm doing exactly what PJ is describing. I'm tuning the gun with the moderator. And we talk, we, I talk to you guys about it all the time. Yeah. We put a big one on there, we put a little one on there, we put a long one on there, we put a short one on there, we put right. one that's plus sized, which means you're shooting a 25 moderator on a 22 barrel. You know, we do all that experimenting and eventually 
the sound is not that important to me because they all will quiet it down. Right. But eventually you'll hit one that the gun or your specific tune, velocity and load yep. likes and you'll start seeing them all go in the same hole. And so I think PJ so, is making reference to tuning yeah. with the moderator. And let's right. talk a little bit about why that happens. Okay, for sure, I, I please. I think that's a really critical thing that I think as you read in the forums and social media, I think there's this misconception. I hear people like, hey, if I put this on, is my point of impact gonna change? Mm -hmm. Of course it is. I, it, I will tell you, I yeah. saw yesterday with some of the shooters I was in my precision group with, right. when they took off their bipod, yep. they couldn't figure out why they weren't hitting targets. Exactly. And I was in my zone doing my own thing, yeah, yeah. and it wasn't until after the fact that I was like, you may want to consider right. that that's part of now this yep. harmonic package. Yes. And, and even shifting which of the rails yeah. you're seated in. Yep. Can have a change. Can make a change on that. So let's geek, I want to geek out on that. Yeah, I want a little you, bit more. I want, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want Chris to give yeah. you guys the context of why nodes and right. harmonics, like what that means, like why that's important. So, like what's going on when that happens? It, as PJ and I just have gone through all these different platforms, big bores, smaller calibers, we realize that yeah, like PJ was saying, you change anything on your gun, and I call it. It's a term that I, I don't know if I've coined it. I've, maybe I've heard it somewhere else, but I call it the harmonic signature, right? So everybody has like their own signature. Okay. When you change anything, that signature will change. In the minutest way, if you put anything on your barrel, especially the muzzle, your harmonics are gonna change on your barrel. So what we, in our discovery, we went through all the different sizes of Donny FL, and like, I'm talking like, what are they, just a, a like fraction of an ounce of difference sometimes yeah, between one side not, or the other. Not very much at all. We would go from like a big group to a really small group. Well, everybody, like we were seeing in the forums, oh, it has to do with the air stripping effects. Maybe in some way, shape, or form. But well, I, if you've got dirty yeah, yeah. air in front of it, right? Who knows what's going to happen? Sure, but right? mostly so it's, you it's need the weight. The air stripping, but mostly it's the weight. It's it's got to have that. Yep. It's what got to have a good good design. Right. But then, which one is right for this setup at this velocity exactly. with this tune? And it would be different if you because you could take an FX gun like this and you could get to 865 feet per second with a little more reg and a little less hammer, yeah. or you could do it the other way. Sure. Yeah. Though, but but the fact that it's at 860 or whatever the number is, it doesn't. It's not the same. It's not the same harmonics. It's right. That stuff. Yeah. So all those things you have to work the back end. We'll talk it. about that in here yeah. in a minute. Yeah, yeah but yeah. before we get into tuning, and that's yeah. what that's what PJ means by the back end. Right. Is can one of you guys? I'm trying to yank it out of you. Yeah. Give them a description yeah. of. The node and the harmonics. Yes. When you yeah, when you when you hit the sweet spot, yep. what is happening? What between the the barrel and the pellet and the pellet leaving the gun? Like okay. when you've hit that sweet spot, what's happening? Okay. Let's get that foundation. So and then just we'll the move foundation, because I think we're kind of like skipping some big parts we are, here. We're, yeah, we're yeah, nerding yeah. out big time. So when you're first getting into this, and if, let's say if you do a Google search for like harmonics, barrel harmonics, rifle harmonics, you're going to see these very scientific and very neat artistic drawings of a, of a wave. So you think of like a, a harmonic tuning fork, right? You, you slap it and it sounds like a C note, right? Well, harmonics in a rifle don't act like this perfect wave. They're actually, it's oscillating as it goes around. And so as you're shifting the weight, and we're gonna talk a little bit about actually what's in this thing, because right? there's some really cool the, stuff. The barrel tuner. The barrel the harmonic tuner. Barrel tuner. Right. We're gonna to get to it. It's we'll, this we'll mechanical get... piece here in this truck. Yep. But just the science behind it. Sorry. Is... <laughs> Don't touch that. Don't touch that. <laughs> the science behind it is you're basically trying to find a place. Now this is an important thing that I really want everybody to understand. It's a place, not time, because that's different. It's a spot where that your projectile is leaving the barrel at the exact same spot every single time. That's by, what I was trying to get them to. By manipulating that weight. And the reason why that's important is that versus spot versus time, because up to this point, we have been using velocity to find that spot. That's what I've always done. Right? And velocity so, and the moderators to try to tweak it. Exactly. So when Steve, all this awesome like tuning stuff he does on his channel, it's still the right way, right? You're gonna find that velocity at some point when that leaves the barrel, that's the spot. That's step one. That's step one. But we, with this, you're basically not worrying about the velocity. As long as that projectile is stable, you can now find the spot without messing with any of that. And there's one other important thing on here. Yeah. When you talk about finding that spot using velocity, yeah. the spot for that velocity, for that projectile, mm -hmm. may not actually be a good place for that projectile design. Because it, it'll, like, it's so, so, so talk about that. Your, <laughs> let's say, 
the spot based on tuning mm -hmm. is at 920 feet per second right. with the JSB, in this case, 30 cal 44 grain pellet. Yeah. That's not mm -hmm. good. It, it's good here. It is not good <laughs> 100 yards over there. Right. It's not good for it. It's too right. fast. Yeah. It's way too fast for that. Yeah. So we, we, so we call it destabilization. You've got to, you, you now have an imperfect system because mm -hmm. what you're trying to do is regulate stuff that is ineffective over here. Mm -hmm. And maybe in this setup for that pellet, mm -hmm. where you want to be, which let's say it's 860, right? Where you want to be doesn't hit the spot. So let me speak to that maybe. So let's break it down because right now we got a lot of pe new people at home trying to learn and the idea is not to overwhelm them and freak them out to where they're like, man, I ain't even gonna try that. You know, we, we want to encourage them. And so to break it down, step one is put the tune on your gun. Yeah. Okay, do some experimenting with velocity. Find out where your pellet or slug wants to be. You can refer to one of the half a dozen tuning guides yep. I've put out on my other YouTube channel, 8EAC Vlog. Mm -hmm. Really good ones are the late Maverick one, the late mm -hmm. Dreamline one, mm -hmm. the Airvatory Avenger one's excellent, the one. Daystate yep. Red Wolf one is really good, and the, uh, and the cr uh, FX Crown Continuum guide is really good. You really have to watch all of those to get what the object of the game is, but the, the basic object of the game is to get your velocity, to that round, you get your round to that velocity where it's doing this, you're watching at a low power in your scope and it's not doing this, or it's not doing that, or anything goofy like that. You want those flying really straight and true, yep. then you start to work on compressing your extreme spread yep. and your standard deviation, and that is step one. Step two is gonna be using this harmonic barrel tuner to kind of bring that all together and give you a performance edge. And yeah. I also want to add that having a harmonic barrel tuner, and I don't want to steal too much of Chris's thunder, but these are going to be universally available to you guys too, yeah. um, not just for FX, is it makes the tune less critical. In other words, you're not trying to do all the work with the tune. The tune's going to get you three quarters of the way there right. instead of originally using that to try to get you all the way there. And you and can then, focus on consistency. And that's what I was wanting to cover. Um, so in our in our testing and talking and brainstorming, so just kind of to finish the story. So yeah, we we did the suppressor testing. Or yep. PJ did a lot of it. We we're talking back and forth about that. And then I said, hey, well, if, you're, if we're just shifting weight, <laughs> if we're just shifting weight, somebody's late. <laughs> <laughs> if we're just shifting the weight, then let's go ahead and like let's see what what's out there. Okay, what's out there, right? Yep. So we found in the firearm sector, the Boss system was back like 1992. <laughs> The Boss system by Browning actually had come up with a shifting weight concept. And so in like precision firearms, they kind of figured that out. All right, cool. Well, awesome. Boss, after 20 years, that patent went away. And so what we wanted to do is like, hey, I'm going to draw a drawing, send it to PJ. And like, hey, man, what do you, you know, what's, what do you think about this? And you're like, yeah, hey. It's like I'm like, I'm going to find a manufacturing partner. I'm like, let's come out for air guns. And eventually gave that uh, the, the drawing to FX and then rest is history. All right, yeah. so can I ask you a little bit about that part? Yeah. Because for us, it's always kind of an interesting topic. So sure. it's not a good word, but kind of like a nobody like us, yeah, right? Comes up, with a, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. comes up with an idea yeah, yeah. and approaches, you know, um, you know, just a, a giant like FX air guns. Right. And it's like, hey, I got an idea. You know, you'd think that they'd be like, yeah, right. Yeah. Get Everybody's got ideas. Next. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. You know, so how, I want to hear how you guys kind of it was and I'll, how they were with you. I just I want to hear that story. So I'll be completely honest. I mean, it's the universe and the alignment of the planets because actually my relationship with FX had absolutely nothing to do with that. Actually, okay. So what had happened? I think it was back in November of last year. Uh, John from FX USA reached out to me, and he, John and I have been buddies ever since like Airgun Depot Long Ranger days, right? That's mm -hmm. actually what got me into this was when John and Cameron came up with that golf the ball, exploding the exploding 150 yard ball. golf ball. Best, I'll never forget that. Best contest ever. So. <laughs> I, you know, I've known John for the last few years, and you know, we've been talking. And he was like, "Hey, you know, so like to be part of, you know, at the Team FX, and which is great. I mean, we're constantly, you know, collaborating, talking about ideas. But this then was actually something I had been working on at that same time, from like years before with what I was doing with the Texan and talking with PJ. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those things where, hey, FX, I'm kind of doing this. What do you guys think? And Frederick was like, "I love it." Let's see what we can do. Okay. And it went from like a piece of that, that easy. It was a piece of paper drawing that I, you know, had penciled out, and like my biggest design considerations was, 
it needs to be low profile because mm -hmm. we've got with air guns we've got tube guns that go out to the end a lot of guys running you know short barrels where it's got to be able to extend the barrel it's got to be able to make the barrel a little bit longer to be do, able to work back do, do we want to so that we don't muck with pj's gun yeah do i don't want to touch that here do we want to bring yours oh this we'll demonstrate with or bring yours yeah, in here because okay. we yeah. yeah we can drop chris's exactly. and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at this point <laughs> And we can we yeah. can lean on the barrel. Yeah. I can do the eight yeah, exactly. lean. Yeah. Freak you guys all out. <laughs> so <laughs> um, all the yeah. comments like you're bending the barrel. Said, Don't touch Stop bending the barrel. <laughs> Uh, okay, so oh, you want to jump in the middle? yeah, I demonstration here. I mean, the basic um, function. Oh, let's let me finish the story. So yeah, yeah. so you know, uh, Frederick uh, saw the drawing, and, uh, and they are so fast in their ability to like CAD things out, prototype things, get things into that. Like how quick did it go down? Oh man, so from the like, just said, hey, you know, here's the drawing. Yeah, love the idea. Yeah. I had a photograph from Frederick 48 hours later, and it's basically it was almost exactly this. We did make a couple design changes during our testing. But it was almost exactly that. So those guys basically took a, pit, a, a, a sketch, yep. and in 48 hours, they turned it into a, a working hunk of metal. It looks as, I mean, there was things in my sketch, like how how I was going to actually make sure that the, um, you know, it was going to smoothly rotate, right? Mm -hmm. And he saw it all, like, here's, a, you know, here's an O-ring here, and he just kind of understood what kind of tolerances needed to be in there. You know what's so cool about that? That's very telling. You know, we look at a company like FX, and the speed at which they innovate is like... It's just, it's just mind blowing. But that, that's an insight into yeah. how fast they yeah. move, and they just see something, man, yep. and they just jump in and they, and they get it done. Yeah, yeah. So do you want to dive into actually how it works and what's in it? I would what, love what to, to show okay. those guys because okay. right now they're going, oh, a harmonic barrel tuner. Sure. Okay, so it kind of replaces this idea of the moderator. So how does it work? And what's the whole kit? What do they get? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just sort of the, the um, anatomy of this. Okay. I'm going to let PJ kind of talk about how he set his up. Okay. He's yeah. like a master at that. All Awesome. So from, from from the muzzle back, basically what we have here at the very end is we've got um, these removable muzzle uh, threaded pieces, and what they are, they're caliber specific, okay? And you, this basically it comes right out. Tell them that matters. It, it does matter. <laughs> it does matter. Yes. <laughs> PJ learned through our uh, our field testing here. Don't try to shoot 30 caliber pellets to the 22. It's not safe. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not safe. It's the lead yeah. haircut. Yeah, it's not yeah. good. Don't. Yeah. Folks, don't try this at home. <laughs> Sizing pellets with the 22 is not a good one. Um, so, but, but this is functional. This has a functional purpose, and what that is doing is it actually has an air stripping effect, right? It's mm. kind of getting rid of some of that dirty air as it leaves your muzzle and then enters into your and let's, suppressor. And let's bookmark that waste air, dirty air. We got to come back to that. And exactly. Talk about that. Yep. Maybe PJ. So, and then um, next we have the tuning weight, and the way this um, actually works is when you put your suppressor back on, and what this is is it's kind of a how can I explain this? Um, you're not indexing the barrel, which is actually a completely different topic, but you're indexing to a little dot here on top, and that makes it top dead center. So when we go through the tuning process, which we'll describe to you, you always start with that dot on top, and then you basically rotate it back towards the breech. Mm -hmm. And that's shifting that center of gravity. I mean, sometimes, I mean, some of our tunes we found is in within one hash. I mean, Steve, look at that, dude. I mean, that's barely, I mean, it's moving like. Okay, so can I ask a question? Off. Yeah. So I'm not hearing clicks. I'm not hearing ball yep. detents and springs. This reminds me a lot of turning an ocular on a scope or yep. a magnification dial on a scope. It yeah, kind of yeah. feels like that, too. Yeah. Is that so, kind of the deal? So the, one of the ways I like describing this, if you ever had like one of those mag lights, yeah. Where you turn the end, yep. and then mag light goes from a wide beam yep. to a narrow beam. It moves beam. forward and backward, it slides up and down. Have, it's it's basically a, the mag light of okay. barrel tuning. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. So as you turn this, and the way we design this, and again, it's, it's those really tight tolerances that FX is able to do. Mm -hmm. There's an O-ring in there, mm -hmm. that's it. There's no clicking, there's no internal moving parts. And the other part is we also realized we didn't need any grub screws to hold this thing once you get it to where you're at. Mm -hmm. It's tight enough, that's not gonna move. Mm -hmm. And so the reason being, if you put a grub screw in this at the end, that is also changing your harmonic signature. And it's it's actually down to the torque on that screw. Yeah, well, like if you over torque it under, mm -hmm. and it's not so much that the harmonics care that, oh no, that screw is too tight, isn't yeah. there too much? It's that it changes it. it well, changes. what I was just envisioning in the sunshine, or er, envisioning in the sunshine. <laughs> Woo! It's been a long week, guys. What I was just envisioning, PJ kind of talking about, is you take that barrel, you stick it out in the sunshine, that grub screw starts heating up, and now it's pressing harder on stuff, and, yeah. and it's mucking with that too. And they're different metals. They're yeah, different, and they're, they're different metals. So, different, so you're going to get different forces. If you were to talk to 
the folks who take care of Olympic rifles. Yeah. yeah. Those, because some of those use grub screws for their barrel weighting systems, but those are marked and they are thread locked, and and how much thread lock gets used oh, makes a difference. At all. I mean, this is like yeah. super. I mean, but you're talking about the top level of that sport, mm -hmm. and we're here talking about the top level of, of this, this sport. sport. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let me ask you a question. So. If they own an FX air gun and they order a harmonic barrel tuner, yes. what do they get? Great question. I think there's a bit of some confusion. When you first see it, you're like, okay, is it just this? Yeah. No, it's the whole shroud. Okay, okay. why is the shroud important? All right, and I'm actually going to use, you guys were just talking about something as a good segue. To <laughs> so this idea of basically thermal expansion, right? This is going to get super geeky. All right, thermal expansion. Um, if you think about it, if you know what a bimetallic strip is, we're giving it one side steel, one side it's aluminum as it heats it will actually bend in different directions okay mm -hmm. well let's think about what's inside this barrel all right you have a steel liner right in a no, typically an Normally aluminum, aluminum, aluminum shroud, shroud right so the thermal coefficient of aluminum is way higher okay than steel yeah all right well guess what has one of the lowest thermal coefficients like a resin like that probably Carbon fiber yeah so one of our big things is that as you sit out in competition you're out at the range let's say the sun is hitting one side of your barrel and now we're talking real minute stuff i mean aluminum shrouds are fantastic I mean, we've been punching sub or groups for years with aluminum there's right. nothing wrong with it right it's just this is taking it to that next level of let's just remove that factor it's less it's less subjective to external exactly. variables so that was one one thing. And that's so, a performance edge. It's a performance edge. The other part was carbon fiber has a great amount of deresonating. So getting rid of a lot of those vibrations. And I like telling this story. I was I used to be before this. I used to be big into <laughs> road biking, okay? And when road biking went from aluminum frames to carbon fiber frames, the biggest thing other than the, the weight savings was when you're on your bike, you have all kinds of road vibrations. Yeah, all that vibration hand. went away. When you went to carbon fiber, mm -hmm. It was just like riding on a cloud. Wow. So this is also taking some, at least some of that out of the signature of the vibration. Can I ask a question sure. maybe on, for PJ? Yeah. So you're running the same thing um, around your your inner barrel. Are you running a carbon fiber sleeve, O-rings, nothing? I have a carbon fiber You're running the car, is it glued in place or is it, is it not? not glued in floating place. carbon floating fiber carbon sleeve. Fiber. No, the Golden nuggets. The tolerances <laughs> are that it doesn't move a lot. It's like, still tight. I, I did you wrap it in Teflon tape? Um, I have in the past. Mm -hmm. I did not when I put that together. Okay. And the results I got were, this is really good, and there's no reason to change it anymore. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, can we, so if they do not own an FX, sure. and they want the harmonic barrel tuner for their Hudson yeah. or their Day State, or their yeah. Air Venturi Avenger, whatever yeah, yeah. for the air arms what what option do they have so there is another option that we are uh we are actually producing right now where is it okay yeah. awesome this is the removable tuner and so basically with this this will work on any air gun that has you know typical was a half 20 half 20 half 20 unf, 20 UNF. UNF. Mm -hmm. so if your air gun is threaded to take a suppressor what this does is it's going to extend your barrel system just a little bit, and then your suppressor will go on the end. Mm -hmm. But now you've added the ability to do the, the weight shifting part, but you're okay. not going to have the, the de-resonating aspects of the shroud. All right. And in, in 30 seconds or less, sure. talk them through. You get the tune there. You set up at 55 yards. What's the procedure to the tune? How do you so tune it? What do you do? You want to you wanna have this set so it's not tight up against the moderator. Mm -hmm but up to that zero point at, you know, up here, all the way up. Okay. okay. Yep. Light, lightly touching, basically. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of in where, it, where it's all zeroed off. But, okay. but you're all the way forward, okay? Mm -hmm. You take your five-shot group. I start with a five-shot. You could mm -hmm. do ten, but mm -hmm. I start with a five-shot, right? And okay. I'm looking at what is that group like? Not, am I hitting the bullseye? Because that's a totally yeah. separate. Are they all that's landed together? Right here, but are they yeah. all clumped together? Yeah. And then I go, so you got long hashes and short hashes. Mm -hmm. I go the next hash. And I just, I take like one of these targets, so it's big grid. Mm -hmm. And I take that next shot. And then I turn it and take that next shot. And I don't dwell on looking at it because I don't have a dog in the fight of mm -hmm. which of these settings. And I don't want that to get into my head. Okay. I will say, because I should have before that, we're all set up back here. I'm getting nice, low standard deviation. 
consistent velocity at a velocity I know is good for the pellet I'm shooting. Okay. Super important. So on my 30, you know, that's... We're gonna, I'm going I'm to go get there. I'm going to bring know, your gun back up here to take them through your tune. So um, turn it, shoot it, turn mm -hmm. it, shoot it, turn it. And so I'll turn go it, shoot through, five, tune it, tune I'll go through like five. two full rotations. Oh, okay. Um, and then I walk down the target and I take... And I'm like, okay, okay. Oh, I got a note back at the. Looking over this way. <laughs> <laughs> where my target is, right? If you, the, here's here's the whole magic about microphones. If you yeah. look that way, yeah, the sound <laughs> goes you can't that way. Hear so, what you're talking about. So, uh, my target, which was over there, now we're going to pretend the target's over here. Uh, I look at the target, and I go down. I have notes, right? If I know, like this group had a big gust of wind come up in the middle of that. Uh -huh. Okay, well I'm going to reshoot that group. So I have a grid on my on my bench so I can keep track of mm -hmm. which shot you know which shot is at which of the spots on the dial mm -hmm. and I'm like huh it's looking pretty good at in my case it's looking pretty good at three you know the third one over mm -hmm. on the first rotation mm -hmm. it's looking a little better at four than it's looking at two mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go back to the bench mm -hmm. and let's go from three to three plus one hash. Mm -hmm. Three plus two hashes, okay. three plus three. It's like zooming in me, on it, making it is, smaller movements. It is, small, yeah. now we're doing smaller adjustments. Okay. Steve, it is so easy. I'm so I mean, excited just, about this. It is just Because it, it takes the pressure off of I, making the tune I am perfect. Not, I am not a master tuner back here. Mm -hmm. I consider myself very much an amateur on that. I understand the concept and the theory, mm -hmm. but I also get nervous <laughs> when I start making those adjustments because it's like, I, it's really good. And is it gonna be any better if I start mucking around with it? Yeah. And so I, that my, like my own, like a little bit of nervousness mm -hmm. when I get something really good, mm -hmm. this is like, I'm gonna move it from here to here. Gotcha. I can move it back to there. Yeah. That's really easy. So. I find like let's say you get a gun from a really good retailer who takes the time to put that good tune on it. Mm -hmm. So I've got a good base tune with a tight standard deviation mm -hmm. or a tight extreme spread and a, a low standard deviation. Mm -hmm. Now I add this and all I'm trying to do is find okay I don't have to worry about it. If I switch pellets yeah it's still really tight mm -hmm. and I'm still good with that velocity. Now I can take care of the end stuff. And this is where that part of the equation should be handled. So that, what's interesting is what I'm hearing about this, like I'm trying to break it down. And to me, what I'm hearing is that the tune is important, but it becomes less critical. Right. This here really kind of helps make, get you over, get you across the finish line, even if your tune is eight tenths of the way there. Right. I, I would just say, you know, if, if you've got a, uh, 40 or 50 foot per second yeah. extreme spread. Right. This is not going to fix a problem. So like let's that. let's be clear. We're talking once you get your tune down to a 15 ES or less, yeah, I would say and I'd call it a 4 SD standard deviation or less. To me, a, a great tune is a 10 11 ES mm -hmm. and a 2 SD. Yep. Like when I'm, I'm at, there, I I'm feel like 12, I'm home. Well, I'm let's let's 12. switch. Let's switch okay. them out. Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> I won't touch it. Don't touch that one, BJ. Let's just so, get you like, I'm gonna get you kind of centered yeah, you here. Do that. You know the camera. Yep. Let's get uh, maybe PJ in the middle and we'll get on his wings. There we go. So. But can you just take them through yeah. like your tune? Cause they wanna know what gun they have that. They wanna know the caliber, the speed, the pellet, where the reg set, that kind of stuff. Sure. So uh, FX Impact Mark III. Um, regulator number one is at 140 bar. And number two is at 100 bar, and that's shooting 30 caliber JSB 44 grain pellets. The last time I had the chrono on, it was, and that was here, because uh, it differs at elevation. Mm -hmm. um, that was at like 869. 44 grain 869. Mm -hmm. 700 millimeter liner? 700, yep. Standard the, or the heavy? It is the standard. The standard, so it's the one it comes with, it's the one in 24 twist. Yep. Uh, my power wheel is at 12, and I am 
between three and four. I don't have my cheaters, Steve. Mm, it's okay. <laughs> uh, it's like uh, one one line left of the three. These are plus one and a quarter. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> that's We're all I'm, getting old. That's what I wear, man. Uh, I am at, I would say, 3.25-ish okay. on, the, on the macro or micro wheel. All right. Who wants to talk about waste air behind the pellet Just and how really important, important that is? Yeah. I guess, let me kick it off yeah, yeah, on yeah. that if you don't mind. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, so when I'm making tunes, guys, on my tuning guides, that's to get you in the ballpark, yeah. and then what you have to figure out from there, you're gonna fine tune that tune. And you'll know you'll, you will have arrived when the shot cycle of the, of the gun is in a quick, clean place, and you don't have a lot of waste air emerging out the muzzle behind the pellet or slug, because that's what's gonna cause a lot of this. Right. And I'll turn, turn it over to these guys. So, what's one of the great things about being part of the Team FX is actually there's a lot of very smart people, way smarter than me, that have actually taught me about this idea that it's not just the air behind the pellet, it's also the air in front of the projectile. So, Ernest, Ernest Roa is, I'm guessing, who you're talking and about? And others, but yes. Okay. Yep. And so this idea of that waste air, that turbulence that kind of goes around you know, your projectile as that's leaving, having this air stripper in, in place will help kind of clean some of that up. Uh -huh. And also the Don EFLs also play a big role in that They do? Well. Yeah, the so, monocore yeah. design is meant to, to divert that air. So you don't get a perfect seal in a barrel. Right. E even with the smooth twist design, it isn't a perfect seal. Mm -hmm. There is, the, the air can move way faster than the lead. You know, the air is accelerating, mm -hmm. so it's under higher pressure and it squeaks around and it mm -hmm. gets in front. And you really need something because that air out front is going to cause turbulence. You're trying to move that out of the way so the pellet has... Uh, I, I've, seen, I've seen video clips of stuff shooting really fast, talking about cycle rate, mm -hmm. where that the destabilizing effect of air accumulates and like all of a sudden starts, stuff starts clipping because there just isn't enough time when you're, you know, shooting a full auto air gun mm -hmm. to get everything out. Sure, it's like you want that air pulse to almost. Well, look at that. What, what a perfect landing. <laughs> and what, you almost want that air pulse to stop right short yep. of that pellet, yep. or leaving rather than enveloping and kind of coming out with yeah, it. Absolutely. That's kind of the end goal, end game, I think. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, honestly, when in this, this right here, when the FX put that in into the entire system, it really is kind of. I was like, wow. That just takes this whole idea to the next level. So, awesome. Yeah, love it. So, question: When they probably all want to know yeah. when is this coming? They are shipping the out. universal. Yeah, they are coming. They're coming over across the ocean right now. Okay. And, yep. So these are uh, available. I believe at Utah Air Guns will be on the website okay. right after RMAC. Okay. And uh, they'll they'll be taking orders. And this doesn't come with a shroud, I'm guessing. No. So this is the a FX board. harmonic barrel tuner comes with the shroud. Yeah. yeah. This comes with itself. This is it. This is just <laughs> you know the tuning weight. And there was one last thing we did not talk about this. There's actually either, uh, we put deresonating rings at the base of that so you it, actually have of the shroud of the shroud uh -huh. so when you, when put, you go it to on, put it on yeah, you tighter. notice i've i've done a couple of installs and taken it off put it on stuff like that just to see if it's repeatable which it is um, it is a slow i'm pushing a you know i'm pushing a not like a knife through a jar of peanut butter mm -hmm. but like you know something with a flat end on it through and it's you're moving it. Just, just take your time. Yeah. Move it through. It's kind of it like is, taking two PVC pipes and gluing them together, and you can kind of yeah, feel that you pressure. Yeah, you feel that pressure. And it's pushing and back I found, a bit. And actually, I've, the first couple I didn't do this, but the last couple I have is put a little bit of silicon grease on there, just so it'll slide a little bit better. Mm, on there. Mm -hmm. So cool. Yeah. Well, guys, yeah. um, just to kind of close it out, mm -hmm. we've got Chris Turk with Team Utah Air Guns. Mm -hmm. PJ Clark with Team Saber Tactical. And on NFL. And on, <laughs> and on NFL and Side Shot. It's all kind of one team. Um, you really, your Team FX2, you've been taken into the FX yep. umbrella, yep. which has been great for both you guys. We're here at RMAC. Yes. Yeah. Kind of a big, epic it's a big deal. deal. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of getting blown away with yeah. what I'm seeing out here. I'm seeing like PRS shooting courses yeah. and NRL powder burner guys yeah. over here. Yeah competing i mean this has just been like next level yeah so i gotta ask you what's been your favorite part of this and, and what's been tough yeah i mean for me lessons learned you know i'm not a competitive shooter this is my only second time ever doing this first time was at pyramid cup where i also learned some hard lessons <laughs> so maybe a couple more of these i'll quit learning those hard lessons <laughs> But, it's all um, part of growing, man. It's about, I mean, you know, don't show up to these things just trying to rely on your skill set. Mm -hmm. I think that is one big lesson I learned. I mean, for me, 
my gun was shooting like I'm shooting like 225 I shot a 228 one time at home the gun is just a sub MOA gun you come up to this wind man I mean you've got to you got to practice in the wind and I just didn't take the time to do it this wind doesn't exist where I live yeah that's the challenge for me yep. is, is so it, it just doesn't there is wind but yeah. it's not not something that I could be like okay I know when I'm off work next Saturday, I can go and shoot in the wind. Yeah. You know, I might get a day where I have time to really do some solid practice and it's windy and that's like, all right, that's yeah. great. Um, but I shoot every day and I pull a trigger. Yeah. Um, so I'm working on that aspect of it all the time. And now my challenge is, Huh, I wonder what that wind's gonna be like at 12, 12 o'clock or whenever we actually get So it sounds like the common the common denominator with you guys is preparation. Preparation. And find a way to shoot in the wind because we can all get our guns yep. shooting half inch and quarter inch groups right. at a hundred yards, but as soon as that wind starts blowing left, yep. right, up, down, in your face from behind you, which it does out here, yep. Yep. And it'll just, shift. it just levels that playing oh, field really crazy. quick. It'll absolutely shift while you're sitting on the bench. Yeah. I was you know, we had this kicky wind in my first car card that just kept doing this and not like it's doing this and then this it was just constantly kicking so you're trying to time that because it's a, at 100 yards you know I, maybe there's maybe there's a lot of people who've never actually had an opportunity to shoot at 100 yards all of a sudden you go from like this much variance to this much variance yeah. and it's unnerving yeah. when your crosshairs are on the target you already shot yeah. because you need to make the pellet go yeah. in the next target over mm -hmm. those are those so, are hard things so that was my challenge. My first card was, I won't say it was horrible, it was a 194, which is that I, I made a goal of do better than Pyramid Cup. Okay, so I did better than Pyramid Cup. I had a 194, and then I had a 222 in my sec second card. Which is the 194 on that first one's very respectable, actually, because yeah. mm -hmm. the wind on that, what they do, guys, is they, com they you have two days shooting at 100 yards, and they combine those scores to see who goes on to the finals. Yeah. A lot of guys got wiped out, and girls got wiped yeah. out on the first so day. So that second so card, I shot a 222, and I made a personal goal of come here, shoot better than 400. So, goal was met, didn't get me into the finals, but what it t showed me is that this gun can do it. And the fact that he's now gonna be shooting in the finals with right. it is awesome. This is a finalist gun right here. I think the biggest, I think our next plateau for the industry, I mean, FX, we're doing a lot of stuff with slugs, right? You've been seeing a lot of the, yep. you know, the slug barrels are coming out with the 800 millimeter barrel kit for the 22. We're gonna get to a point where it's going to be... <laughs> Photobomb. Yep. Oh, and oh, we're gonna have... Oh, oh, we did, we did oh, get oh, a extra glasses. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we're pushing Yolanda, <laughs> Yolanda Du of, of Sabre Tactical and Danny F.L. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you gotta go back and you're gonna finish this up. Okay, so, finish this up. So, so we talked about, we talked about, um, we talked about what's been kicking your ass. Yeah, yeah. What's really got you feeling warm and fuzzy about being out here? So, Sorry, so do you remember, do you remember the stage where you had the doves at like, there were two of them at yeah. like 178 yards? Yeah. And then there were two yep. like 10, 15 yards in front. Remember that? Uh -huh. Yeah. I beat Keith. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hit all four of them at that distance with slugs, which yeah. is not my thing. Yeah. And I, I was Keith. Keith, how'd you do on that one? I got to know how you do that one. Yeah. Oh, I didn't do very well. Oh, she's yeah. just lying <laughs> yes. up. All right, event specific. What's got you revved up? Let's uh, close it out I with love that. this. The what I guess the standard caliber, small caliber slug. Um, and just watching, I was shooting the uh, the javelins, those mm -hmm. new 22 javelins, yep. and watching them being able to buck the wind at a thousand feet per second mm -hmm. with an air gun slug. I mean, that's cool. It was awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I, I love the bench. I love the bench events. Um, I, watching you shoot yesterday made me wish I shot big horse slugs so because fun. I love being here in my space, settled. It's like being in a patrol car. Yep. <laughs> I got my space. I got my setup. I got all my gear, and I'm ready to go to work. I, I like that aspect of yeah. it. Um, it's uh, you can just okay. I got I know how much time I got. I know what my equipment setup is. That's the part I really I, and I, I I would say second to that is the speed challenge because the the head to head. All right, we're gonna go it's you and me. Let's do this. Yeah. You know, and then the next one you're cheering me on because it's me and him. Uh -huh. And it, that part. Um, yeah, the camaraderie that's is just, awesome. Just Everybody out here is great. Yeah, it's, it's just fantastic. got an energy of kind-spiritedness and everyone's helping one another yeah, absolutely and uh, circling back to that patrol card in case he hadn't had enough feathers in his cap today 
PJ's like 25 years in with Wausau. 30. 30 years in with Wausau. <laughs> He's like a master firearms and you know instructor, and so this this is just the brain power here. Yeah. It's humbling. <laughs> so, uh, but guys, um, thank you so much for sharing your intimate knowledge of air guns awesome. with these guys, helping them learn and grow. Uh, can't thank you enough. Yeah. Not everybody wants to share their dirty little, yeah. you know, podium secrets. <laughs> and, no, uh, I, uh, my my like calling in life is educating people yep. on things. And if you if you know you go to our, my channel anyway, yeah. it's you know yeah we shoot some squirrels and we shoot some pigeons. You and, learn but, a lot doing it. But there's there's to me always it, it's not really a great video. I'm not so proud of the ones that's just like, hey, there's a cool kill shot, which I watch a lot of those videos. So it's not like you don't like them. <laughs> But I, I'm, I'm much more excited when I'm like, oh man, that was really, I got video footage of something that other people could could benefit from knowing sure. about. And those to me are yeah. the ones, even if they don't get views, those to me are the ones that are, are really worth putting out. Absolutely. And I think, Chris, that's why we're friends. Yeah. Because yeah. I think yeah. as our relationship has grown, yep. what we respect about each other is we're not holding anything back right. because I know if I tell you something and you yep. tell me something, we'll then go our separate ways, work on that, and we're yeah. going to come yeah. back with Compare something notes. Yep. that's a lot better than what we started with individually. Absolutely. Most of us content creators, guys, care deeply for this industry mm -hmm. and the progression of it, and we're here to teach and help you all learn and grow. So Absolutely. with that, guys, thank you so, thank so much, much for spending Absolutely. so much time with us this morning. Thanks, Steve. Good luck in your Man, 100 thank today. Thank you very much. Thank you very no much. Pressure. No pressure. Awesome. Lots of television, <laughs> lots of people, lots of wind. It's game on. Awesome. Game on. Thanks, Thank guys. You, Thanks, guys. If you touch your target, it's gone. You will be DQ'd. Do not touch your target. Make that clear. Do not touch your target. Okay, you can take pictures and do all you want, but just don't touch it. Um, is there any questions or concerns that we didn't go? Preloaded magazines are good for this? You can preload magazines, no problem. We will inspect ammo if needed. Just be aware, you may get checked for your ammunition. There's a lot of money on the line in this pro class, and we want to make sure everybody's fair and play by the rules. If you're not, we'll probably make it noticeable that you're not. And publicly shame you and move you from the range. Let's make that clear. We'll call you out. Guys, so Lauren Parsons is, is another one of these people that we can learn a lot from. She's, you gotta correct me if I'm wrong in this, 
but it's either seven or eight years consecutive ladies field target champion here in the United States. She won the world champion in 2015. Yeah, that's correct. She shoots for Team Day State, which is Wolfpack. Yes. And she's here competing with her Day State Red Wolf. Awesome, you got it. Do you want to just take us through it, maybe end to end? Sure. And let them know, I don't know, maybe what makes it special and competitive out here in an event like this. Okay. Start there? Yeah. Cool. So we start at the back end here. Uh, of course, this is the Day State Red Wolf 22 High Power. Um, I really like the 22 caliber uh, platform because for me, it travels the best in the wind and it's it's a little bit easier to find 22 caliber pellets when there's a big pellet crisis, you know? And it's just the caliber that I got most accustomed to. Originally, I come from 177, so it's, it's kind of hard for me to make that transition to 22, let alone 25 or 30 cal. Um, so I really like this 22 Red Wolf. Um, I shoot the JSB redesign pellets at 25.39 grain and they're traveling at about 975 feet per second. So I got my gun set up on the medium power. It's got the newer GCU2 board in it. If they don't know what a GCU is, what is that? It's the gun control unit. So this is a full electronic gun. All right. This is kind of like the upgraded version. It has uh, more solenoids in it and stuff like that. It's kind of like your Safari. So it can make more power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's got more power, but that's basically the gun. A little bit tuned, but as stock standard as you can find it. It's got a standard, you know, uh, single shot tray in it. This is just anodized and stuff. I have a level on here just to know if I'm level. I shoot Collis K1050. I absolutely love the Collis optics uh, because it's the most clear for me at 100 yards. And it might seem like an overkill, but 50 power to see a 22 caliber pellet hole and to make sure you're not shooting a cross shot or you're hitting the eight ring or something like that. It's, it's very, very important. Um, moving up, I shoot AccuTac FC4 bipod. I absolutely love this AccuTac bipod. It's gotten so many nicks and dings on it and it still stays true, so it's built like a tank. Can, can, we, can we hang up on the bipod? Yeah. Like what's what's important to you in a bipod? What do you look for? So it has to have an ability. So I don't have the canting one just yet, but I do plan on getting it. But it has the ability to twist and turn, to cant, so you can put your gun perfectly level. At this stage, I can just extend some of these legs to compensate for a skew bench or something like that. And that's something crucial to a shooter like myself to try and get the most accurate hold that I can for that 100 yard accuracy. Um, and then moving all the way to the end I, of the barrel. I have another bipod question. Yes. <laughs> so Accutech makes one, just to show them mm -hmm. the wide stance on that. Yeah. They make one that's narrower. Yeah. So what would be your thoughts of this over that or vice versa? Um, I like the wider stance one because it's the most stable for me. Um, of course, I have a fairly expensive rig with a scope and it's it's quite a bit of weight down there. So I want something as wide as possible to give me as much stability as possible. This is essentially its legs, so it has to be very, very stable to shoot off of. The narrower one is good if you're gonna carry it or you wanna keep it on the rifle at all times. I don't like keeping it on my rifle at all times because I just have a wooden stock. So for me, the wider one works better. If you have a metal frame gun um, and you want to keep it on there at all times, I would prefer the narrower one. Do you, do you feel like the weight of the bigger one helps you out here in the bed trust? Yes, I do like the weight on the front a little bit more. It kind of grounds that gun because it's so powerful and it pops up a little bit when you shoot it. It does keep it nice and grounded. Um, so I really do like the Accutac for sure. Can I ask before you get onto the barrel? Mm -hmm. So you, if I recall, you said you were shooting a 25 grain 22 cal to about 970, did you say? Yeah. That's interesting. That's been, that number's been a little bit, um, we're seeing a pattern. Okay. Of that being a good place to be with these guns. It depends on the pellet, you know, you have to find the correct ballistics coefficient of that pellet and where your pellet flies true, you know, maybe your JSB 18 grain heavies fly better at like 880 feet a second, maybe 900. So it depends on what the pellet was designed around. Mm -hmm. um, and to find the true sweet spot of that pellet, and the same thing for slugs, you need to try to find the optimal traveling speed of that projectile to maximize its efficiency. Cool. Okay, barrel. Sorry, I've held yes. you up like three times on the barrel. No problem. And right at the end, I have my zero DB compact. I like it a little bit quieter. It does help with the muzzle flip. And at the end of the day, it's red, red, red screws. It's pretty. 
half the time it's about what looks the best <laughs> on the line and I love the look of this gun and that makes me more confident in shooting it so get something that you like. Can we talk about flip a little bit because that's a topic that's very interesting to me. Okay. Do you feel like, so you, do you feel like the moderator smoothens out the air behind the pellet and, and gives it stability that way or is it more about adding some weight at the end of the barrel to cut with harmonics? Like, um, I don't really know the exact answer to that. I've played around. And I don't either. That's why I'm asking. I've played around with it a little bit, and I've done some really cool shots in slow mo um, at night with some light just at the end. And you, you'll see the air coming out of that pellet is completely different. And I do think that that definitely has an influence on it. But whichever way you decide to go, keep it consistent. Don't decide to take your moderator off the day before a match and then push it without it. Or to put one on because uh, somebody told you it's the best, you know? Keep consistency and keep to what works for you. Whatever you decide, train with that, stick to it, and ch make changes after the match. I'm going to ask you more about training. Yes. But, uh, so your barrel. My barrel. Uh, I have a Lothar Walther Polygon barrel. It's a one and eighteen twist. Uh, one and nineteen twist. I'm sorry. Uh, right hand twist. Is that the barrel that comes with the gun? Yep, standard. Okay. Now, so barrel prep. They ask all the time. Are you cleaning this all the time? Do you just shoot it until the accuracy falls off? Like, what's your, how do you approach it? Um, so I've tested it a little bit and seen where the accuracy falls off and stuff like that. I cleaned it before I came here. I won't really see a need in cleaning it again. But at the same time, I feel like it just doesn't let up as badly as some of other barrels that I've shot before. Uh, on my 177, it has a standard 12 groove on there, and that one I never clean. That one I clean maybe once every 2,000 shots because it does not let up. Um, this one, a little more frequently, maybe every 500 or so shots. This weekend, I'm only shooting one event. I'm only shooting the uh, uh, 100 yard, mm -hmm. and I so I'm not going to clean it. Probably not. If I do, maybe with a little bit of cleaner degreaser, just pull it through there and make sure it's nice and dry. Replace that breech o ring. How about pellets? Do you like sort pellets? Measure head sizes? All that it seems to be kind of real fashionable. It does, and I've gotten way into that, and then I've fallen off the wagon. Interesting. Um, I try to. This weekend I'm not going to be shooting any sorted pellets because I just haven't had the time to, but I have a really good batch of pellets that I shoot. I bought up an entire case of pellets way back in 2018, mm -hmm. and this gun absolutely loves that pellet, mm. and so I just stick to one pellet. Um, I'll probably start sorting once my case is It's so up. interesting hearing that strategy, because as a reviewer, you see that. Yeah. You see, sometimes the pellets like the gun, sometimes they don't. Maybe this sleeve does, and this sleeve doesn't, yes. and my ones from 2018 work, but these don't now. It's all about just finding that batch yeah. that your barrel really gets yep. along with. Yep, so the best recommendation that I have is maybe to buy a can or two and ask them for different batches. If you go to some stores, they might have the availability of different batches for you. Uh, shoot them through your gun, see what kind of happens, if the groups are really tight or really wide, and then decide on that one and buy a bunch of them if you can. Right now it's really picky and the market's really tough, but that would be my best That's advice. That's super cool. You know, I've always wanted to ask someone in field target because for a guy that really just shoots on the bench, mm -hmm approach has been so big for me and I don't and I talk about it in front of them I kind of get a little preachy with it but like by that I mean how heavy the shoulder is how heavy the cheek weld is you know when I'm grabbing at the downward weight on the gun am I squeezing it is a light hole you know from someone who spends 99% of their life standing and in all these different positions like this you know, can you talk a little bit about approach with bench rest guns and when you feel target? It's 100% crucial. <laughs> it's so great. absolutely, absolutely crucial. Um, you have to have the best consistency out there. You have to keep that hold. If you decide on a light hold, cool. If you decide on a heavy hold, just as cool. But you have to keep it as solid as possible at all times. It has to be the same, right? It has to be the same. And you have to practice that. But it's kind of getting into that muscle memory. And I know how they say, Muscles don't really have memory, but it's your subconscious that remembers how you're holding the gun and how you're learning the gun, um, and that's very, very important. Like, I, I, lo important. I love, I love Lauren's enthusiasm on this because this is a topic that I'm passionate about, mm -hmm. and sometimes people will come along in the audience and so they'll be like, "It's a PCP. It's not hold sensitive," and I'm like. My ass is not hold sensitive. It's hold sensitive. So like, but the same, but the same time, they're like, "How do you do that at 50 and 100 yards?" It is 99% finding 
the pellet for the barrel and then finding it the state of cleanliness that it wants yes. and the rest of it is that that hole is exactly the same every time and it's what the gun was. Right, I mean, if you look at a bench rest event like we have this weekend, there's for the most part similar guns on the line, but those people aren't performing the same way and you have to ask yourself why because yeah. at the end of the day it's not the gun anymore, it has to be the shooter. How can it be a shooter when you're sitting on a dead bench? There has to be some of that hole preparation. and preparation, wind holds, all of that stuff come into play and that's why it's still a shooter dominated environment rather than equipment dominated. That's so cool. So last two subjects I wanted to ask you about. Um, I do want to transition into the event, so we can talk a little bit about that. But I, I would love to hear a little bit about preparation mm -hmm. and what you do to get ready. Because this morning, it looked like there was a tornado coming through here. Yes. It's calmed down now. Yes. How do you prepare for that back home in Phoenix, Arizona? Um, Phoenix, Arizona, so we don't have the option of choosing elevation necessarily in Phoenix and you also don't have the option of choosing the weather. You have to just prepare as best as you can with what you got. Um, I try to travel to matches as frequently as possible and that's why I travel for field target. I feel like that would be good for me um, and so I try to invest in that part. It's also more exposure and there's no better training than big match training. You can shoot a million pellets in your backyard but when you get to a match that pressure that you're feeling um, everybody's talking you're on the line it's not going the way you're planning that kind of stuff is really hard to prepare for and so you kind of just have to be in the best mindset i guess now you see a lot of people with headphones and yeah. earbuds and yes. earplugs just trying to tune it all out yeah yeah for sure so i don't have that because i don't like to tune it all out i like to listen to it kind of be a part of it um, i feel like it's a part of the game and you have to work with the conditions that you're in um, if you if you have headphones on i feel like i get into my own head a little bit too much so i try not to do any of that and, and still be personable you know still be um enjoying yourself because at the end of the day we're doing this because we like it Absolutely. it has to be fun yes Okay, so transitioning into the event. Yes. You are from, not originally Phoenix. No. Where are you from? I'm from South Africa. Okay, and how did you find your way here? Oh, very long story, but long story short, I, I found a job, an internship in Ohio. I worked there for a little bit, um, found Air Guns of Arizona, started working with them a little bit, and then uh, they took me on as an employee, and the rest is history, and now I shoot. I want to hear more about your Air Guns of Arizona story. Because I know they, they really kind of took you under their wing and, they really did. and did some special things to yep. enable you to call this home. Yes, yes, they've been... Can you talk about that? Anything? They've been my 100% support. I, I couldn't have been here without them. Um, they really trusted in me and saw the vision in me and trusted me to, to help them out as best I can and as best that they can benefit from it. Um, they help me. It's, it's a very long process to become a, a U.S. citizen or just to get a green card or anything like that. So they've really helped me a lot with that and I can be forever thankful for that. And you're a full-time employee then? Yes, I am. What are your responsibilities? I have many responsibilities. Well, just give us three so we can move on to the event. Purchasing manager, uh, warehouse manager, as well as YouTuber manager. That's so cool. Okay, so what attracted you to the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge? Um, there was a couple of things, you know. It's it's a big event on the calendar. It's a 100-yard match, which we don't see every day. And there's a bunch of other people going, so I kind of wanted to go because everybody else was going, you know. It was, uh, it was a fun event. It was with my teammates. I love spending time with them no matter where I am. So The Wolf Pack. Uh, the Wolf Pack, yes. And I really love to do that, so that was what attracted me most. And if you win, what do you get? $21,000. And that had nothing to do with it. Uh, it did probably. I don't know what I would do with the money if I wanted, but uh, yeah, it's it's a crazy amount of money. That becomes real. Lauren, thank you for letting us peek into your world. It's been absolutely fascinating, and I appreciate you so much. And good luck this week. Thank you, Steve, and you too.
Gotcha. Okay, guys, for years I've been trying to get Justin in front of you. This is Justin Welch. Where's home for you? Uh, Bakersfield, California. Bakersfield, California. And you may recognize Justin from my late Maverick full review. He was my savior. I was going crazy for, for six <laughs> weeks, and this is the guy that was like, have you checked the pallets? And I'm like, no, I haven't checked the pallets. <laughs> right. So thank you. Thank you. Hey, no problem, you man. rescued me from my torment and got me over the finish line with that review, you gotta man. Gotta check everything, gotta check everything. You do these days. So a little quick background on Justin. Back in 2018, he took second place at the AOA Extreme Bench Rest Pro Class 100 Yard yep. at our last Pyramid Air Cup, which was 2019, thinking back now. He took first place, he won the Cup 100 Yard. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And am I missing anything? Um, what about the year before? Did you take like a fourth or fifth or something? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's the same year. Same year. I took um, fifth place at EBR the same year as the Cup. So. And to add to that, he just qualified for the 100 yard here. Or not qualified, but he's going on to the finals for the 100 yard here yeah. at RMAC. So this is a guy who's a wealth of information. I'm going to try to pull it all out of him here and give it on and pass it on to you guys. Right on. All right. So. Um, what are you running? Tell us about, I guess start with caliber and what the gun is. Okay, so I got a FX Impact MK2 with a power plenum upgrade. Uh-huh. Um, MK2? MK2. Not the new M3. No, got the, actually got this 2019 right after Pyramid Air Cup. So, okay. Um, ended up putting a 580 bottle on it. Um, it's got a lot of Sabre and Crawford aftermarket. Got the Crawford top rail. Um, allows for forward movement without having to add adjustable buttstock. I'm not a big fan of the adjustable butt stocks. I like the factory. Mm, interesting. So now I can run the scope a lot further forward without having to buy special mounts or anything. Why is that important to you? So it's proper eye relief. If you don't have proper eye relief, you're going to be fighting your weapon, your whatever you're shooting, air rifle, you're just going to be fighting it all day long. Okay. So without the proper eye relief, it's just you're going to be bobbing your head up and down, and you, what you need to be doing is proper cheek weld uh -huh. right on target. Okay, and what is it that you, you don't get excited about on the back? You don't like the movement so, there? So, yeah, it, um, so I do. I like to do a lot of the precision marks, mm -hmm. stuff like that, so besides the bench rest. But um, I like the, the freedom of not having the actual grip. You know, whenever you set that thing, it's it's one shoulder mount yeah. at a time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just, you have no freedom. So if you get in a position where you need to let your your gun sag, yeah. you know, you have that, you have that thing, you know. I see, you're talking about the, uh, yeah, the Saber um, adjustable buttstock, yeah. where it's got all those little rubber fingers on it. Yep. You can like just hang that thing literally on you, so it gets grippy. Pretty I much. see what you're saying. So this is more like a run and gun yep. setup for you, but it also works well for the precision stuff. Yep. Okay, what caliber is it? So it's 30 caliber. Mm -hmm. um, I'm shooting 910 feet a second with 44 grains. With a 44 JSB 910. Yep. So being that this is a Mark II, 700 millimeter, what's the barrel? So it has a 1 in 36 twist, um, smooth twist X. So liner. this is before they went to superior, the... Superior. All yeah, that the stuff. superior. So it's ah. one of the original x liners if this what did, what did you use to win the cup the pyramid air cup um i use the same liner just in a different weapon in a different uh, impact it was was yeah. it the, the the original impact yeah the original impact that i that i got from utah way back so uh, it's actually an mk1 with the power plane upgrade. okay so this is one regulator this is one reg yes what's the reg pressure set at? so the reg pressure set at 140 mm -hmm. on on this gun um i like to run high reg pressure so that valve closes faster interesting Interesting. Talk to us about that. So with the valve closing faster, you don't get no turbulent air behind the belly. Ah. So and it's it seems it's like having a strong man and a weak man trying to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the weak man's gonna have to push a little bit harder to achieve the same, you know, the same effect. So what are you saying? So <laughs> what are you saying, Justin? No. <laughs> so so you know if you have you know. If you got a weak guy trying to swing a two-pound hammer, you know he's got to put a lot of oomph in it. You got a pretty hefty dude 
you know, so you know, I'm referring to the lower rig pressures as weaker. Okay, so the higher higher rig pressure is going to make that hammer work harder, it slams the door on it quicker, mm -hmm. so that you don't have any waste air. Yep. And the waste air, when your pellet leaves the barrel, is what can cause. Yeah, pretty much. So what you're doing is, is you're, you're stopping the airflow before the pellet gets out of your barrel. Okay. So you're stopping, so that way, whenever there's no back pressure, that air is just going to rush out if your valve is still open. So you want to make sure that valve's closed before the pellet leaves? Yes. And that's the game? That's, if, if you do that, that's the best accuracy you're going to get. Normally, what we like to do is tune the guns. We like to tune the guns to the feet per second you like, crank the rig up just a tiny bit more, mm -hmm. and that tends to close that valve a little faster. Uh -huh. So get it where you want it and add five bar? Yeah, five, ten bar. Five, ten bar? Yeah. And if Around you need there. to come off the hammer spring a little bit? Yeah, whatever you need to stuff down. Yeah, pretty much. So and you get it nice and nice and you know tight, tight, and hard. Close pretty much. <laughs> close the valves up. So awesome. What about um, so? I don't know if you saw that Mav vid, but I was playing with that gun. No O-rings, O-rings, carbon fiber sleeve, yeah. all different ways. Can you talk? That seems to be a lot of the guys today, and over the last couple of days as I've been interviewing them, are talking. Harmonics. harmonics. Do you want to talk a little bit about your setup and how you like to run it? So I haven't had the privilege of using one of the new tuners that just came out. Mm -hmm. But I like evenly spaced O-rings on the liner. So you're running O-rings? I run O-rings. I wrap them in Teflon tape. So okay, so the O-ring goes on the, on the, on the on barrel. barrel. And, and then, then wrap them in Teflon tape five or six times. And then and you slide it in that, the sleeve. Slide it in that guarantees that they stay in. In place. Interesting. So no carbon fiber sleeve for you? Not on any of these at the time. How, how many O-rings are you running? Are you bunching them up? Um, so four. Up? So I have four O-rings evenly spaced down through there. Mm -hmm. um, my harmonic tuning is mainly suppressor weight. So okay. I use different size suppressors. We talk about that. We use this as a tuning tool. Yep. So I use different weight suppressors depending on the tune. So if I, if I want to run a little bit hotter for different conditions, I'll just throw a bigger suppressor on or a lighter, just depending on whatever it winds up wanting. Whatever it wants at that time. What are your thoughts on, so you're running a 30 cal gun, so do you run a 30 cal diameter hole on the suppressor, or do you like to plus size it? Um, I don't like to plus size it. I, I like to, you know, wipe as much of that clean air as we possibly can, mm -hmm. you know, that dirty air, actually. So that it doesn't matter. So, yeah, so. Wow. What about, um, the 30 cal versus you see some people out here, Die Hard 22, Die Hard 25. Yep. What is it about the 30 that works for you? So, what I've noticed is the pellets are more consistent mm -hmm. in 30 cal. I've noticed that every time you open up a tin of pellets, there's no bent skirts. You know, every once in a while you'll get one that's like that. I, it's just, I've, I've come to where I just check lot numbers now. Mm -hmm. Whenever I head size, I'll check a lot number. If a lot number's good, I won't even head size the rest. I'll just do one sleeve of of pellets, mm -hmm. and depending on if I get, you know, five good tens of pellets out of those six, mm -hmm. however it is, then I, if it's if it's not to where the the bad to good ratio is that bad, I'm not gonna sort the rest of them. I'll just shoot straight from the tin. So how do you go about finding a lot? Like how do you go about identifying a lot? So normally it's, it used to be on the back of the tins, but now they have barcodes since there's so many brick and mortar stores now. Mm. So they have a barcode on the back. But um, normally the, if you buy a sleeve, it comes in a white, you know, in a white box, and mm -hmm. it'll have the lot number. Or you can actually probably ask for it, and they'll give you the lot number yeah. that it came from. And so you're saying that, like, once you've identified that the pellets are consistent out of that lot number, that lot number. you know that that die back in the check has made all those pellets, and you you have confidence to yeah. where you don't feel you need to sort them. Yeah, this weekend I've like, shot we head size six tins, mm -hmm. and we burn all those up. They shot really good, so I have not head sized the rest. I've been shooting straight from the top. That's so interesting, man. Tanya, we can learn a lot from these guys. <laughs> what else? So, oh, so okay. So, what have you, what disciplines are you shooting out here? I know you're shooting the hundred yard. I know you're shooting big bore. Mm -hmm. Probably here in another 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, or so. I'm in relay too. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> and what else? Um, shooting precision marksman, 
shooting that well, obviously 100 yard big bore. Um, we shot slug the first day um, and speed. Are you shooting any other guns besides this? Um, yeah, I did, my 100 yard is my original one that I used in um, the Pyramid Air Cup and well, basically all the bench rest. I just, it's basically my bench rest gun. So. Okay, and what are, you, what are you using this one for then? So this one is speed and precision. Uh -huh. So I have that, that lower rail also, this longer rail keeps the scope closer to the barrel. Mm -hmm. So my, all my dopes are a little bit tighter. Yeah, they're not, you don't have to go so extreme. Yeah, and fitting inside the ladders is a lot more. That's why I like to run the Crawford rail as well. It keeps, keeps it's closer, tucked up to the bottle. Scope's lower. Everything's a lot sleeker. Mm -hmm. Fits in the tighter spaces, especially in the precision. You're having to shoot through barricades. You're having to shoot through uh -huh. hog wire, whatever you got to shoot through. So Crawford and left. Well, yep. let me ask you this then. So if this is your running gun, how how does your hundred yard gun differ from this one? So the hundred yard is is basically the same setup. I just you push these a lot harder in these conditions, you know, you're banging it, you're doing all kinds of stuff. So that's why I like to run two separate guns. Oh, in case something gets messed up. Yeah, so this one's just as accurate. Okay. It's just as accurate. This is actually my backup, just in case if that one goes down. Okay. So, <laughs> but it's just, I don't like, this happened to me at the last arm match. So I used one gun for the whole event, and we had speed finals right before the 100 yard final. Mm -hmm. Ended up breaking the gun. Uh, there's so, a nugget for you guys. Yeah. Like back, like backup race cars. Yeah. Backup so motors. Ended up breaking the gun in the speed final, and I had to try to pull it off in the 100 yard. I see. So there so was no time. It was, you know, right after the speed, went right up and. And had to shoot the 100 yard final. So we just had to. I feel you. I feel you. I want to make sure I'm hearing you right. So, your 100 yard gun, still 30 cal, still 44 grain, still 95. The original smooth twist. Yep. The original smooth twist. Not the superior. And the 1 in 36 twist, did you say? Yeah, 1 in 36. 1 in 36 twist. Huh, interesting. Okay, same setup back here and stuff? Yep. Everything's, everything's all factory other than. Just the aftermarket upgrades and the, the new power plant. So you took the new power plant and you put it on here? Uh, yeah. So we, when it, I had um, official air guns whenever the new plant came out. Uh, I had them go ahead and upgrade. Ah, okay, so. cool. Accutac bipod, Sabre Tactical Bag Rider. Oh, and I have a monster, monster design um, power wheel on the other side there. So. Talk about that. Okay, so the monster I don't know about that. So the monster design power wheel was actually in design before the M3 came out. And it's a 16 position um, hammer spring as well. So instead of it going two different lobes on either side, it's just one big lobe. Oh, instead of having, yeah, like with the, the original one, one, two, three, four, five, and then you can go the yeah. opposite side. Yeah, this, yeah. One, this one's just like the new M3, it went all the way through. And, and so you get a little bit more finer. You have 16 adjustments now compared to the old 10. And you're not having to go to the other side to get the tweener. Yeah. You can just, you've got yeah, this kind of this, second You can just go right up. And Oh. That is a deal breaker on the bench rest. Yeah. That is so. What I love about it is, while I'm shooting, if I see that it's really sporadic, and I learned this at Pyramid, I can turn it down, I'll turn it up. Just a little bit to my gun in the middle of my tune. Just to flatten it out in that wind condition. In that wind, if, so, if, if that wind is is brutal, slow it down. The pellets are way more stable on the slower speed and high winds. There's and a then, nugget for you guys. And if <laughs> If, if there's no wind, you want the higher speed because there's less chance of a spiral, there's less chance of, uh, um, you know, major flyers. And, uh, yeah. so. mm. And it's interesting, too, because that's a pretty slow barrel. Yeah. A 1 in 36, too. Yep. It's interesting that it has that much of an effect. So my lowest tune is, is 840. Mm -hmm. And the highest point on my wheel is, um, the highest point on my wheel is... Um, I think it was eight, nine, six, nine, six. So I have all that fine tune in between. And you'll start at about nine, ten, and see how it goes. Yeah, that. nine, ten has been the ticket number for these old liners. So then I just kind of mess with them. How did you set it up to where um, that? How did you set it up to where the regulator was okay with that large of a tuning window to still run flat? So was that hard to do, or does it, does it just work? So that's why I run the high regs as well. So with the higher rig, you you know if, if you tune if you tune your gun to run good at the you know the highest point that that rig's at with the highest hammer strength, uh -huh. you have no more room for it. So if you go over hammer, you're overpowering. Yeah, things are moving so quick that yeah. it doesn't really matter. So like that's what I'm saying. I like the tune in the middle. So if I have a high rig, 
If I have a high reg and a medium hammer, I can that target, you know, 9, 10. To find that, I can go down, I can slow it down, I can go up, and I'm still not overpowering my reg with the hammer. Mm. Well, with the lower reg pressures, those hammer, messing with that hammer spring can really start messing with your ESs and SDs. Yep. Huh, that's the stabilizing the tune that you guys are always talking about. Yeah. Uh, I like it. Do you want to close it out talking a little bit about your scope setup? Yeah, sure. Um, I have the Element Titan on this gun. Um, I love the 34 millimeter, especially for precision. We get to see a lot more you know, field of view whenever you have it on lower power and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So um, we uh, we tend to we tend to. Um, it's okay. With the, we're, we're all tired out here. Yeah. So the, the Titan gives you better so, vision. So better vision with the yep. 34 millimeter for, for you know for speed and precision. Mm -hmm. um, I have the dirty mill reticle inside, you know, for holders. Like today we had a stage where you could not dial. Mm -hmm. And you had to hold over out to 100 yards. You're going to need that tree for your wind call. Mm -hmm. wind this morning. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's an important part of your setup to be successful at. Yep, and it's got a track through. It's got, you know, clear glass. So I'm really happy with the element lineup. And I'm excited. Last question. We're all we're all crispy. We're all tired. We're all right. we're all suffering from mental fatigue. A long weekend. Justin's not alone, and, and he's got a boogie here. I grabbed him in between heats, but um, Armat, what, what's what do you like best about being out here, and what's been the toughest on you? Um, just the, the camaraderie, you know what I mean? Just being able to see everybody that, you know, it's been, what, two years since? It has. Big break. So, you know, it's like just to be able to see everybody. I know a lot of people can come, but um, just coming out here, getting to see everybody compete, have a good time, it's, you know. And I don't know if you've seen lately, but it's been one heck of a event. So. It has. It's been amazing. It's there, been awesome. There's some seriously cool stuff going on. And what's been the toughest for you? Um... What's been the toughest is speed. Speed kind of in my lunch. Did before, it? So. <laughs> That's a lot of moving around. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. So cool. Well, man, thank you for being so generous with how you set up your gun and how you've been successful and yeah. your tunes. And I'm sure they're eating it up. Can't thank you enough. All right, man. Good luck in the finals and good luck in big board. Thank you. Thanks, Crazy. Justin. Who's ready for Armac 2021? <laughs> Exciting, you guys. I'll tell you what, this has been a long time coming and at least a whole year. I mean, we were uh, absolutely devastated by uh, not being able to do it last year. We should have cameras on every card as of right now. So they'll be able to you watch the targets on the jumbo screen. Um, rolling dice. Should work. Spent a lot of money to make it work, so you guys could have that. Um, but uh, here's the maiden voyage. I guess is a good spot for it. So good luck to everybody. Uh, we wish all you well. In second place for ten thousand dollars. For second place, ten thousand dollars with a score of two twenty four with four X's. Oh, I'm sorry, two twenty five with two X's. Utah Air Guns own Josh Warren.
Guys, super excited about this one. Been trying to get caught up with Thane Simmons for y'all for a lot of years now. And if you don't know Thane, Thane and his dad Val are the brains behind Saber Tactical and Side Shot. Yeah. I got it right? Yep. And recently, like, I don't want to tell the story wrong, so I'll defer to you for this part, but just a little bit of an intro for them. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are, are, are trying to understand the relationship between Side Shot, Saber Tactical, and Don FL, because we're all getting vibes that you guys are all kind of working together now. Good. So okay. how do, paint that picture for us. And even Utah Air Guns. We get called all the time for that too. Um, so what happened, so Donnie FL is a separate company. Donnie Yolanda started that uh, years ago and it operates as its own company. Side Shot, obviously started by myself and my dad, uh, also a separate company, right? And then we just kept making more and more products, like the Side Shot magazine for the Impact, right? We started using that. FX saw that and they said, hey, we love that. We want that um, as part of our lineup of for guns. And so we, that's how we kind of became, became involved with FX. Can I ask you a little bit more about that? Yeah, go ahead. Because that's like the dream for any of us and, you know, inventors, you know, like yourselves that, that just understand this stuff. You know, how did that story go? I mean, you made this magazine. Uh -huh. I remember when it first appeared and the circumstances under under which it appeared. Sure. It caused all sorts of problems. Sure. <laughs> sure. But we won't get into that. But but what happened next? So so as you know, Dad and I are, are big shooters. We love 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 air guns, and we we always look for ways to get a little bit of an edge mm -hmm. on everybody. So created the magazine, uh, went down to EBR, used it, uh, just excelled with it. Everybody loved it. Um, and uh, just from there, you know, it, it, it didn't, right off the bat, didn't catch the eye of FX. It, I think it took about a year before they're like, you know, whether they received emails or whatever from all the people saying, hey, your mag is on the weak side, right? It's not, it's not the best magazine. Their mag is the best magazine. <laughs> and so that's when they approached us and said, hey, we want to start using your magazine. We developed a really good relationship with FX and we work, you know, we, we, we build, as you see, a lot of products for their guns because we have such a good relationship and they have such a high sale volume. It's just such a cool story because it, it's not the, it's not the traditional R&D, rip off and duplicate. Yeah. Or, hey, I saw that somewhere, I'm going to start building that for my own air gun company and then they start to, I think it's just so cool how they wrap their arms around you. Yep. You know made it so that you could both have success with the product. And yeah, and that, it's just unheard of. That, that's a good point because, I mean, Frederick mentioned that to us on the phone said, look, other companies would probably just rip it off and use it themselves. We don't want to do that. We want to work closely with you. Um, obviously, that that helped develop that relationship with us, having somebody honest like that approach us and say, let's do business the right way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, kudos to Frederick and Johan. Such great people. Owners, inventors of FX, FX Air yeah. in Sweden. Yeah, really love those guys. So Awesome. So before, before like, I think that Side Shot, the magazine, kind of put you on the global stage. Mm -hmm. But before that, I knew you as Side Shot. Scope Cam. The Scope Cam. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about that. So years ago when we got into air guns, Dad and I started with the Benjamin Marauder mm -hmm. and we started shooting doves and Dad had this idea for using a mirror to capture the image and not get in the way of the shooter. Um, my wife had actually bought me a, a device to hook on the back of the scope, right? And I came up and showed my dad all excited, like, check this out. <laughs> so I'm trying to put it on there and we're shooting the gun and it's moving a little bit, moving a little bit. It's just didn't work very well. So dad's like, I can do it better, right? So he started playing with ideas, cutting stuff out in the CNC machine. Well, not CNC then, he was a manual machine by himself. Until he came up with a product that worked, started testing it, said, hey, this is awesome. And then from there developed side shot scope cam. And, you know, we basically attached to the, um, um, just the, the housing of the scope so that we have a one inch 30 millimeter and 34 millimeter with two rods so we can just slide it on it sits to the side the shooter can look through here unobstructed and record with the shooter. and they have a little gopro or a cell phone yep GoPro on the or side. cell phone yeah what's so cool about that is like i remember i remember like us all kind of fussing with our casio cameras on the sure. back and then you guys came along and then it just seemed like Everybody who is anybody that had a, a social media platform was all about side shot scope cam. Like every hunting shot, every hunting trip, like all over the place. So it kind of became like the status quo. Yeah. So you guys have had huge success there. You had huge success with the side shot. 
magazine. magazine. And, and, that, and that's kind of where it went from. Steve was went from that to the magazine, and then we just kept inventing things, right? And we just, with all these inventions, and this is kind of where Donnie came in. Right? Okay, okay. We had all of these different inventions that we wanted to do, and we're like, well, Sideshot's kind of its own thing. Granted, the magazine's there, but we need to form a company where we can produce all of these different products. Because that's Donnie's forte, the marketing, the production, yes. I'm guessing, right? Donnie and Yolanda are amazing at production, customer service, getting your products to you, keeping products in stock, like they are phenomenal. Anyways, we became really good friends with Donnie and Yolanda, and so we talked to him and presented the idea and said, look, why don't we form a company? We'll come up with these, this, this name for this company, right? And um, Dad and I, we will focus on developing products. Uh -huh. You guys focus on manufacturing, shipping, customer relations. Such right? a cool story. And they're so good at that. So let's let people do what they're good at. So that's how Saber Tactical works today. Dad, myself, and Donnie, we all went in together, formed Saber Tactical, and that's what they do. They take care of all that side. We take care of the invention side, and we work really, really well together. We have a really good relationship. That is awesome. And that brings us to the now, right? They've got this huge foundation in place. They've got all the tentacles out there to do what they need to do to get the product here and out to you guys and to keep you happy. And now we've got chassis and bottle adapters yeah. and bag riders and butt stocks and gosh knows what else. Sure. Do you want to take them kind of end to end through your gun? Yeah, yeah, and sure. So this is one of the products that Steve mentioned is the chassis, right? Uh, again, we have a, a base unit, which would be the crown, the FX crown. It's a crown, okay. And it would come in either like a laminate stock or a you know, like a plastic stock, right? And so we said, hey, we want it to be more adaptable to the shooter, so let's come up with a chassis um, for this incredible gun. So we developed this chassis um, through Sabre Tactical. It folds, it comes apart. Uh, you're able to adjust your cheek height based off of your scope height. Uh, obviously, you know. Do you want to show them the folding real quick? Sure. I'll help so you support you it a little button. bit. It's magnetic, it just folds like this and comes back like that again. Um, the, the rear of the gun, which is what's really neat, is it's so adjustable just like any chassis, so you can adjust your butt stock. So if you're if you want to get aggressive, you I'm going to square you up a little bit sure. here so they can see you. Go ahead. Yep. So if you want to get aggressive on it, you can get aggressive on this and just fit it right to your shoulder. You know, we're shooters again, so we we try to find products that will benefit um, the shooter the most, right, and make him. Give them the edge, mm -hmm. essentially, right? So we've, butt socks are adjustable, cheek risers, bag riders. Uh, this is another product that we're coming up with. It's a monopod system, right? So the monopod, another thing we find with bent shooters is you need to be able to transition quickly from your target and smoothly, right? And traditionally, you're with your shoulder, you've got a sandbag you're squeezing under here, and you're trying to, you know, your, your whole body's stiff and you're mm -hmm. moving and pushing the gun. This allows you to, I guess we can go forward to kind yeah, of show sure. here, is to basically have the gun shouldered, very light pressure with your cheek weld, very oh, light pressure I see on your where you're shoulder. Going with this. This is sweet. And then you can go up and down, left and right, and really just focus on the shot rather than the excitement of shooting and, and I, don't, I don't even know how else to put well, it. Well, I'll take it over. Okay, like this little device here is basically replacing the uh, like a huge sled like I can see these little knobs on here and he was making micro adjustments on it for his horizontal and his vertical and you can just it looks like you can get that dialed in yes and still and just run with the bipod up front instead of carrying this huge sled around with you exactly with you everywhere and and the nice thing about this one this is this is our universal model uh, that we're gonna you know we're gonna produce this very very soon uh, to offer to the market but it goes across the board so not just to air guns, but firearms and everything else that you can think of sure. works very well 100%. on that. But yeah, you can just, just set your gun in here. And then also, we've got adjustments back here to clamp this oh, to the wow. buttstock butt of your gun. <laughs> so there, there's a lot of different ways that we've um, machined this. And it, I mean, we've gone through many, many models to get to we, where we are now, but mm -hmm. it works so well. And you guys also released, gosh, it's probably been six to nine months, I can't remember. I think we've all been so busy over the last year. But you released, like a, um, it replaced, well, it, it's a, it's like a pod that comes down off of the buttstock. Yeah, like so a, mo kind of a monopod. It's, yeah, it's this, but it's much less. Specific to our buttstock. Aha, uh -huh. right? okay. So we have a magnetic connection. That's already out there. What do you call it? A monopod? It's a monopod. Okay. Yeah, same thing. So we call this the monopod. This is a universal monopod. Mm -hmm. And then that monopod is specific to our buttstock. So if our buttstock can fit to your gun, meaning the crown, 
uh, the Maverick, uh, the Impact, uh -huh. all of those take our, our buttstock. So that you don't need your chassis to run with your adjustable buttstock. Exactly. Or the bag rider, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, and it's a smaller unit. It just slides in magnetically and then you can do the same things. Your horizontal, your vertical, mm -hmm. adjust very quickly. Now this bag rider looks a little different than the one that they offer to work with like a Maverick sure. or a Crown. You can buy that independently of the chassis, but it still kind of bolts up right up to those guns. Yeah, yeah, this one's, this one's just, it's, it comes with the chassis and then it comes off with two screws here. So if you don't want to run it, you don't have to, but it, it goes with the looks of the gun and, and functions very good. Okay, um, do you want to keep moving forward on the sure. chassis? Because there's all sorts of amazing things to talk about that aren't on normal chassis up here. Sure, yeah. Like yeah, the M-Lock, so, the Arca, all that crazy. So, so if you move forward, you've got an Arca Swiss rail on the bottom, which just allows you to quickly transition where you want your bipod. Or if you've got a tripod, you can set it up on the tripod and transition very quickly can as I, well. Can I kind of yeah, turn it on its side so they can yep. see the holes you put in there? Yep, right here. And then we've got a threaded hole right here. So if you've got an adapter on a tripod that doesn't offer Arca Swiss, you can just thread the adapter into here and then use your tripod as well. So for us camera guys, a, a standard photo video, quarter inch thread, yep. you know, that you're gonna hook your DSLR camera, or whatever, it's gonna, you know, bolt right up to this chassis. So Perfect. you can put this on your giant camera tripod if you want to go out and go shooting with it. Yeah, That's absolutely. what's so cool about that. Now on the side we have what are called T-slots. It, it functions the same as an M-lock. So you can take a traditional M-lock, you can just buy off of uh, Amazon, mm -hmm. and you can just, you can put in a, another Picatinny rail on there, mount a flashlight, uh, lead weight, wh whatever you want to put on there, you can mount to the side of it, and then you've got your Picatinny on the front. Okay. Um, moving up, up the gun, this is just, this is a barrel tuner. You want to switch places with me? Yeah, sure. And I'll, sure. we'll just slide the gun back to so, kind of center it for those guys. Th yep. This isn't something we're producing per se. It's just with all the hype about barrel tuners and they've, they've been around for years and years. And what this, what this is essentially is it's just a weight that you move up back and forth to try to hit the right node. When you, when you shoot a firearm or an air gun, there's, there's what's called nodes and your, your gun is vibrating your barrel up and down and you're trying to hit it have the have the pellet or the bullet leave right when it comes down to center each time because if it's leaving here and then sometimes leaving here you're going to have your that's where your, it throws them that's where it throws that, them that it, point of your vertical it just, yeah yeah exactly and if you can if you can move this weight up and down and it's very very little i'm talking like maybe a sixteenth of an inch of a move mm -hmm. and you will see a huge change in your point of impact so so obviously fx has lots of ways the hammer spring the power adjustment all these different ways to tune this gun mm -hmm. But for, for example, we have a 35 cal mm -hmm. um, impact, mm -hmm. right? And to make the foot pounds requirements to shoot big bore up here, we had to max out the gun with everything. So we could hit a thousand feet per second. Sure. Okay. So there's no other way to tune the gun other than a barrel tuner. Okay. So we put barrel tuners on there and started using that and we're able to shrink our groups from, from this down to this. Can I ask a question about yeah. the barrel tuner? So is this different than FX's barrel tuner that they just came out with? and developed with uh, Chris Turk? Sure, it's it's the same concept, okay. right? Um, there's, they've got a carbon fiber shroud, but the concept is the same with all barrel tuners. Mm -hmm. It's just moving a weight back and forth, right? Uh -huh. A lot of barrel tuners- uh, This looks on, bigger though. Looks yeah, like yeah. more substantial than the FX it, weight. It is, it's, it's brass. We tried using aluminum and it just wasn't heavy enough mm. to, to give the, the, the quick adjustments that we wanted. So we put on some brass there and it actually, that's what made the difference for all of our rifles. We tried it on a bunch of different rifles. Okay. Now there's a lot of people that make barrel tuners out there for firearms and whatnot. Um, but again, it's just essentially a weight that comes back and forth. I, I, I don't know if it's something we'll produce, probably not from what I can see right now Okay. for Sabre. Mm -hmm. It's a personal thing for us just to use uh, in competition. So I he mean, was just torturing y'all with that one. We, we made it on Monday. So, okay. so, <laughs> so we, we put it on, we tried it and it worked. So. Awesome. Um, that's what that is. Okay. Yep. You know what I wanted to ask you? Sure. These guys have, have seen it for a couple of years now, and they always go nuts when they do. But the, the double bottles. Oh, sure. You're in the frame. I'm not sure if you <laughs> Not that we have anything against you, but it might be a little distracting for the guys back home. But the double bottles that you guys see yeah. hanging off of all these guns, that's this guy and his dad. Yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about... Um, Maybe how that came to be, and the adapters you offer, and the sure. the advantages, and just run with it. Yeah, um, part of the part of the reason was bench rest competitions. You're shooting so much and having to refill your gun all the time. We said, well, how can we do this and have more air? 
um, and, and work with the rifle. So we built it first for the impact, the FX impact. We made a double bottle adapter here so you can run two bottles off of here, have double the air, and not have to refill your gun so much. And it also, it also seemed to just keep you in that sweet spot longer mm -hmm. um, than just having one bottle. So we made it for that. I've seen some people adapt it to the crown. Uh, we haven't made one specifically for the crown yet, but we've made it for some other guns as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's a bunch of different products that we've made. Cheek risers for the impact. and The pump? Uh, the pump action. I mean, action. you guys saw it in my videos the last couple of years, really. So that that's another thing, another product. Um, we discontinued it at first. It was just so expensive to make with the ball bearing system mm. and everything. Mm -hmm. So we did, we just made a small run of them. But we're going to um, develop another one. We're actually making one right now that works with the Arca Swiss, right? So it's it's an adaptable unit that you can just pull out of your bag, hook wow. it onto your Arca Swiss, connect it, use it, take it back off, throw it in the bag, and not have to alter your your, mm -hmm. your um, air gun in any way. So it's another product we'll be working with soon. The speed at which you guys innovate is just, I mean, we're talking guys, three, four, I mean, it was five years ago that I remember that you kind of brought side shot, the scope cam on. Sure. And then everything was just from there, just tons and tons of product. Yeah. I mean, the speed is mind blowing. Yeah. The, the and it's thing, good. Thank you. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, and again, it's, it's developed by shooters, right? We, we shoot a lot and we just love to make the experience better. So we, we come up with ways of, uh, to make that experience better just by going out and shooting and saying, hey, we could use this or we, or we could use this or go to a competition and say, what could make this better? So, I mean, that's that's where the bag, the, the monopod system came in. That's where the chassis came in. I mean, a lot of things The bag like that. riders, just bag huge. Riders. I used their bag rider in the Maverick review. The, the bottle clamp where you have the Picatinny on the bottom oh. so you can hook attached to your bottle. Mm -hmm. If you've got like a really nice wood stock, you don't want to mess with it. Uh, I, what I just wanted to relay quick was that was a game changer for me in, it, in being able to kind of navigate all the stuff I was trying to with that gun. That bag rider just made a lot of what I was trying to manage so much easier so I could focus on all this tuning stuff. Sure. But speaking of that, Thane's about to jump on his second 100 yard relay. Are you shooting this gun? Oh yeah, yeah. Do you want to um, take him through, you want to switch places, take him through sure, your, yeah. your, your tune? Yeah, absolutely. So oh, also with the, the, with the Arca Swiss, yeah. in the NRL world, um, the precision shooting world, they have a lot of adapters to hook to an Arca Swiss rail. I mean, this is another one that you just, it just slides on here, clamp it on, you can use it. It's a kind of a squishy bag. Squishy, heavy sandbag. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So there, there's lots of other products you can adapt to this system. That are but, outside of your, what well, you guys make. Yeah, for the firearm world. So cool, man. So, um, so you're about to jump on the 100, FX Crown Continuum. Uh, yes, yes, mm -hmm. FX Crown Continuum. The re We're in 25 caliber right now. Um, Ted, Ted Beer, uh, uh, while back, a few years back, he went on this 25 craze. How good the 25 is, it's so much better than 30. Uh, he went to EDR and won it with the 25 cal, right? Um, really, really big on that. There's something special about the 33 grain, 25 caliber. Okay. So what we did in preparation for our Mac is we went out and we shot the 30 cals next to the 25 cals. We had a 30 cal crown, 25 cal crown shooting the same speed. Strong preparation, by the way. We, 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 <laughs> we had impacts. Same thing, testing these different these different guns, and not so much groups because we could shoot a half inch group at 100 yards, right, with the right conditions with both guns. Mm -hmm. But when you're shooting at a target and scoring, there was something magical about this pellet and this chassis hmm. that just came together. It's like the the harmonics almost just the harmonics that just the, vibe. The the pellet itself, it's got a much better BC than a 30. And it, and, it, and it drifts about half as much in the wind. Mm -hmm. You know, when we would shoot, you know, dad might, he might be shooting a 30 cal at 920, and he's, he's going two mil dots in the wind. Mm -hmm. I'm shooting the same gun in 25 cal mm -hmm. at, at 920. At 920. And I'm drifting about one mil dot. That's very interesting. Yeah. So, so we found that our scores would actually, shooting the crown would go up seven, eight, sometimes 10 points higher with the 25 cal in the crown chassis. Wow. And we would, Love the impact. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite guns. I would do the 22 slug as my only gun forever and ever. But for target shooting and stuff, this is like my dream gun. I remember you. Didn't you score pretty high last year at RMAC in EBR? I remember one of those. You you, you were well into the twos. Yeah, yeah. I I I'd, I'd have to go back and look because I forget stuff and just keep moving forward. <laughs> but, I remember he was yeah. in the well into the twos in one of those. Sure. Yep. So no, uh, no, and, that, and nothing to take away. They're all phenomenal rifles, but there's something we found magical with this. 
uh, that we really, really liked. And, and just our scorecards. It showed us over and over and over. And then my dad tried it and was just like, wow. So 25 cal, 33.95, uh -huh. 920 feet per second. What barrel are you running? Uh, the Super Light, actually. That, which is part of the crown. Yep. Now, now smooth, something that's interesting. Smooth, that's next, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, I have a carbon fiber sleeve on this one. Uh -huh. Stiffen it up. We had to mod modify it a little bit, and I glued the carbon fiber sleeve to this. But the, the little pucks in the inside, uh -huh. uh, we had to drill those out a little bit to fit over the carbon fiber sleeve, mm -hmm. and then glued those as well. Oh, wow. So that's how mine is. My dad's a stock. Uh, okay. Right? They both shoot amazing. Right? So sometimes I've seen the carbon fiber sleeves that makes a huge difference on a gun. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't so much. And that all has to do with barrel harmonics, right? Mm -hmm. So Super cool. Like just they, they, well, I just took them through this in the Maverick. Mm -hmm. I shot it for them with the sleeve, without the sleeve yep. at 100 yards, different loads. We talked about it. So you, you can definitely be successful with O-rings, without O-rings. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole bit. Absolutely. Do you remember um, like your tune? Do you remember? This is a, the, the amp regulator. Yep. Do you remember where you're set at on yeah, this tune? Yeah, I'm about 143 on the reg, mm -hmm. um, shooting about 920-ish, uh, right in there, 920 to 930. Um, all of us were, so there's us, our machine is Shane, mm -hmm. um, he's shooting about the same speed, and then my dad's shooting between 900 and 910, mm -hmm. um, and we're all shooting really, really well. So you might, you might have a gun that shoots really good at 900, and then these other guns that are exact same gun shoots better at 920, 930, mm -hmm. right? So just, it just, you just got to go out there and group them and test them yourself and find out what works best. Speaking of that, and this isn't necessarily your wheelhouse, but I, sure. I suspect you'll know a lot about it. Can I slide the gun this way? Yeah. So we can focus on the moderator a little bit? Yeah. Uh -huh. Just walking the line out here and watching guys and the people that are successful, I am noticing a lot of people running more of a streamlined moderator uh -huh. than like a big coffee can on the end. Sure. Do you have anything that you can contribute or or shed some light on that? So, honestly, it's all going to have to do with barrel harmonics, right? Because, again, we've got a weight on the end of there. You could have had a big can. You could have an emperor. Mm -hmm. Donnie fell emperor on the end of that. Mm -hmm. And if the, if, the, if the harmonics work out right, it's going to shoot really good. Okay, so this is, a, this is like a tuning fork. You, 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 you can kind of tune your gun with the moderator so, as well. So, yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. Like tuning you could, weight. Yeah, you could get different size moderators and try that. And, and you would see different size groups at, you know, 100 yards. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But... More, more so, I mean, this is going to be able to fine-tune better. That's some sort of a, yeah, a, a barrel tuner. Yeah, because you're like this or you're like this with moderators. You don't have those micro adjustments. Exactly, and mm -hmm. that's where that's where that excels, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, as far as as far as a moderator, like my dad took one off, mm -hmm. right? His seemed to shoot better the tune that he had without a moderator, and he put one back on and. It was kind of back and forth. Because right? of those nodes. Yeah, exactly. You just want to catch it right when it's in the center. Mm -hmm. And Chris Turek did actually did a really good video on that. So he talked about that and harmonics in the barrel and how it's moving up and down and how you just want to get that harmonic sweet spot. Mm. So. God, this has been great. Um, I know you're a big night force guy. You want to tell him about your scope a little bit? Okay. <laughs> because I know it works great with your side shot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, Night Force makes really good scopes. Uh, there's two scopes we typically use. We use Elements. They're really good scopes. And Night Force. Th these are like your high-end stuff, right? So mm -hmm. an NX, uh, NX8, uh, ATAC Rs, the glass quality in them, you're going to spend a few thousand dollars, right? Um, so you get what you pay for, essentially. Mm -hmm. But just the clarity that at which you get, the tracking, it's it's amazing. For your side shot um, scope cam, uh -huh. for someone back home that doesn't have like a ton of money, Mm -hmm. Do you have a scope recommendation for them that won't break the bank? Oh man, there's there's so many. Um, I mean, as you, I would probably say the best overall scope for the money is the Element Helix. Mm -hmm. I love it. It probably works good with the cam. It does. Yeah, I mean, if you've watched the uh, videos in South Africa, um, Kera, um, Rolf, Matt, that Helix, best bang for the buck. I mean, what, four hundred bucks? Mm -hmm, it's four hundred. And it tracks amazing. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, that's my biggest, my biggest. Um, problem with scopes is that they don't hold their zero and they don't track correctly. Right. That one does, right? I mean, the Titan's really good too, but best bang for the buck that. Glass clarity on this for filming, obviously the higher end you go, the better quality you're going to get in your filming. Sure. Yeah. Um, so last little nugget I want to pull from you, because this is sure. cool for these guys. Sure. When you're setting up your GoPro uh -huh. with the side shot, uh -huh. what do you like to do for like film speed and all this other frames per second? Every, all we do is slow motion. Right, so we do 1080 okay. um, feet per second at, sorry, sorry, 1080 so, quality at 240 feet per at second. At 240, yeah. so I was wondering, 60, 120, 240, so yeah. at 240. 1080 at 240, that's how we do it every single time. And I remember you used to use your iPhone a lot. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the difference with the GoPro versus an iPhone, iPhone works really well, 
but the the GoPro unit is so compact and small mm -hmm. and just just rigid mm -hmm. that you don't see as much vibration in slow motion. Mm. If you're in 4K, it's fine either way, mm -hmm. but the slow motion is where the GoPro is gonna pick up and it doesn't take up all your storage on your phone, right? It all stays on there and you can just take off what you want. Awesome. So yeah, it, it, the GoPro definitely is the best best picture quality. We're get. always wondering that. You yeah. know, everyone wants to put a scope cam and, and knock Tweety Bird off the telephone pole these days. and. I, I was just actually a guy today, Abner from um, Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. does the iguana hunting. Um, he was showing me some footage he got from the phone system, right? And it looked amazing. He wasn't doing slow motion, 4K, but it was absolutely just crystal clear. Super right? cool. Yeah. Thank you for so, that. Yep. All right, so let's close it out with uh, our Mac. Okay. You're here. We're all having a great time. Uh -huh. What do you love best about coming here? Camaraderie. Like, just networking and the camaraderie and being with people like like-minded people that are just they're super cool right the the competitions obviously are super competitive they're super hard and they're fun right but just being around this crowd of people is is probably what brings us back the most every year what's so cool about watching thane and his dad is they're shooting they're helping people they're filling tanks they're answering questions to you know their fans and customers and and they're spotting and they're helping out and they're scoring cards and you guys are just like you're everywhere. You're like sure. you're like ghosts. Yeah. No, it's it's fun. Um, we we enjoy it. I mean, this is this is our passion. So. And here he is making a half hour movie with me, probably ten minutes before he's due to shoot his second hundred yard card. So, yep. man, I'm gonna let you jam. Thank okay. you so much for sharing with these yep. guys, and uh, good luck this okay. week. Okay. Appreciate you, Steve. Thanks. Appreciate you too, buddy. Impact. 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 Start all gear in hand, standing behind the ladder. That's the engage signal. We'll start. Take three shots from the bottom rung. Move to the second rung. Take two shots. Move to the third rung. Take three shots. Move to the fourth rung. Take two shots. Everybody understand that? Three shots. Two shots. Three shots. Two shots. Three two. Three two. Three two. Three two. Three, two. Make sure that your bolt is open until you're looking at the target through the glass and make sure that it's open in all your transitions. Members may speak class. And this is exciting. We've got two extremely fast shooters. Lane one, we've got John Bagakis. Lane two, we've got Jaden Tuckett. Let's hear it for both of them. This is exciting. Spotters, are you ready? Come on, Spotter ready. Shooters, are you ready? Stand by. Fire. Back to right. Hit right. Hit left. Hit right. 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 Hit Guys, here we are with Nikolai Voldoff. And if you don't know Nikolai, he's a guy that we should pay close attention to and we can probably learn a lot from. Nikolai is from Moscow, Russia. He practices law back home. 
and he is their five-time national shooting champion cha champion with open field yeah. air guns and then in 2019 he came over here to the United States and he won the Air Guns of Arizona Extreme Bentrest and showed us all how it was done. <laughs> so what I've asked Nikolai today is if he would take us through his setup because it's different than it was last year. Yeah, and talk a little bit maybe about um, you know, the change. You're shooting a different gun, you're shooting with a different team. Maybe you can start there. How did you come to the switch and Tell us about your trip over this year. So I think we'd better start with my very first gun. Sure. Which I've won Extreme Bench Rest. Mm -hmm. It was custom built. I've made it mostly, I planned it mostly myself and my friends helped me to just make this real. Yeah, because there's a lot of machine work, uh, just the lathing and so on and so on. And the key to success is a good barrel, always because any air gun starts from the barrel. Uh, then I won Extreme Red Rest and uh, I had my prize, it's the State Red Wolf Safari. I wanted to get that very gun and uh, situations, situation formed in, in that way that I had to wait this air gun for almost one and a half year to get it to Russia. Because of the laws and the uh, customs or? Yeah, okay. we, we, we can say so. Fair enough. <laughs> there, are, there are some specifics of Russian law mm -hmm. and you can import mm -hmm. air gun just as an air gun or air gun just a full licensed gun and unfortunately this state was imported as a full licensed gun okay and uh, I have to go through all the bureaucracy system to get my license to get certification to be allowed to own it every time I go outside somewhere I have to get license hunting license okay so, so it was a lot yeah so then how did you come to switch teams to Utah Air Guns and also FX Air Guns? And did they help you come over here based on your success at the Extreme Band Trust? Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that I've never been in any other team. Yeah, I always was an uh, independent shooter. Um, the situation for me as follows. I just uh, wanted to come with my AC. But I understood that uh, I just ran out of time and I won't be able to get my li license to get it away from Russia. Okay. Uh, just before all this situation formed, I asked the state if they are interested to help me to come to this event or to Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge to extreme interest. They were not interested. So, just all these factors formed this situation and. Uh, I was looking for a person who could help because I had some difficult times with uh, one air gun project I was involved, involved in. And uh, Justin Jacobson just told me, man, we're ready to help you, it's not a problem, and you are free to shoot any gun you want. And who is Justin? Justin is the owner of Utah Air Guns, just a good man, and to tell you the truth, I've never met such uh, hospitality from people and I didn't expect it to be so in the United States country that is not mine yeah and just it's perfect really I've never met it and I have a lot of emotions about it because I didn't expect it to be so and he told me that yeah you can shoot for our team it's the only thing I want to get from you you can shoot any gun you want uh, so no one told me to choose a fix but situation formed in that way that I can't take my day state. And we had discussion that uh, just told me that we will prepare a gun that will shoot not worse than yours. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you had a very high performing gun. Um, my gun, my day state is also a different story because I didn't shoot a standard day state. Oh. I was not completely uh, satisfied with the barrels uh, I had to eat. Mm. I had 25 color, color bar barrel but uh, gave about one and a half MOA 10 shots groups. It's not enough to shoot bench restless for me. And um, then they sent me another barrel, it's the RRT barrel, their serial. 
uh, advanced accuracy research team, yeah, in, uh, in 22 caliber because they prefer 22. But unfortunately, it also didn't give accuracy uh, that uh, could just make me shoot sports. So I decided to take my best barrel. It's also a good story because in 2016, uh, due to specifics of Russian competitions, uh, we have limits on power in every shooting class. And at that time it was 60 joules, I think it's about uh, 50 pounds. Uh, and 22 caliber limitation. And I wanted to be at the very top. Uh, so after a series of experiments, I find, found out the perfect barrel and ordered just a small batch of them and lots of water. It was 25 of them. As for now, I can say that 75% of uh, Russian champions shoot the, the, those barrels. Lot of water. Yeah. yeah. Uh, special one. It has special twist rate, mm -hmm. it has special choke parameters, mm -hmm. uh, uh, field and uh, groove, so it's special barrel. And I like it very much. And I've installed it to my day state. After that, this it started shooting sub and away stable oh, wow. 10 shots uh, to 110 yards i usually shoot to one meter 100 meters at 110 yards essentially you know i know lothar walther when the air, when when a manufacturer approaches them from the airgun industry they offer so many different levels of barrels yeah. it's so many different costs yeah, absolutely. and um, and i know there's a lot of work that's done on the manufacturing side so it's interesting you know, to get that right for the gun. So it's interesting to hear you say you kind of went rogue on that, but if we could maybe switch gears to um, Utah Air Guns, mm -hmm. FX, did they help you come over here to the United States to compete in yeah. the event? Yeah, of course. So uh, guys helped me to come and the story, history of my coming to the United States is a, another drama. <laughs> uh, I, I can't live without it. I just woke up at midnight came to the airport to check in. I've got my Delta Airlines business class tickets to have just a good trip, a comfort trip. And when I, my time check-in came, they, saw, they told me, man, we can't let you in. We're sorry. And I'm standing with my bags, bags gun, with all, all this stuff, yeah. without gun, because I didn't have it. And uh, Oh, that's this trip, this, not the 2019 this, trip. This, this, this okay, 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 yeah. okay. This very one trip. And, uh, just I had immediately go to Aeroflot, buy another ticket oh for direct race from Moscow to New York. And the problem was that I had a transit race through Paris. And just even if you stay for one second in any country of transit zone, of Shen yeah, Schengen you can't zone, get into the US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I didn't know that uh, Delta didn't inform me about it, so that was a problem. So long and short. Straight from Moscow to New York, it's possible. and then you yeah. were able to, yeah, you were just able to straight, make the trip straight yeah. Politics, gotta love it. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's very funny. So you arrived, and Justin had this for you. Justin just unpacked this air gun, asked me what I want to be installed. Mm -hmm. I said that I want to have chassis, I want to have regulated back part, yeah, mm -hmm. it's called, and re regulated so, chassis. So Sabre Tactical buttstock. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sabre Tactical Bag Rider right. and, and a Sabre Tactical Chassis. Yeah, yeah. And the scope? Um, it's very important. If you want to shoot accurate, you get to use setup that you get used to. So I try to take everything I can, I get used to. That scope. Scope is uh, Cardis K525. Very good scope. I just, it's the best of my scopes. I like it very much. Perfect glass, perfect radical, so good. Then this rear bag with sand was taken from Russia. Okay. <laughs> and uh, there's no little things if we speak about high accuracy shooting. I didn't change sand because I get used to the tents mm -hmm. of this bag. Uh, and uh, it's important when I just make some corrections. Yeah, I tell these guys all the time that approach is so important. Of course. The way you shoulder it, yeah. how fast you move through the trigger, um, the amount of cheek pressure and wear, the grip, are you squeezing the sides, are you pulling down on it? Absolutely. It's all so critical, the bags to, to consistency, and it's going to be yeah. different with every shooter. So I love that story that you brought your own sand. And, and I've and uh, taken our Russian bypass, my friend, 
makes them they are very firm and uh, when you use them the gun becomes rock solid it allows me to make very very slight mm -hmm. changes and so I use them for many years and I like them very much. Another thing I made uh, in Russia, I have melt lead. Uh -huh. I took some cans from uh, paints and just uh, pour out that melted lead and get these weights. So are those are those pallets? Uh, or for, the, or those, car batteries or the, what is that? Those, those are used pellets from my pellet catcher, pellet trap. Tra trap. Yeah, from my pellet trap. <laughs> that looks like how many, how many thousands of pellets is that? I think about, look, it's easy to count because it's Yeah, it looks eight, like it's eight about pounds. four 4,000 pellets maybe. Eight, 5, eight, eight pounds. pounds. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then when I arrived, I understood that I want to make this air gun even heavier. Uh -huh. Yes, and I had an idea. It's very simple, but why not to do? We just uh, went to the place where people change their tires mm -hmm. and bought these weights with which uh, wheel is being balanced. So, uh, so car tire, yeah. car tire balancing weights. <laughs> why is the weight so important? The more stable the gun you shoot, the better results you get. And to make the gun stable, it must be heavy. That's all. Period. That's all there is to it. Gra yeah. Gravity is your friend. Yeah. So speaking of getting the gun to shoot, this is an off-the-shelf FX Impact Absolutely. M3. But, yeah. But you and Justin, when you got here, yeah. you and Justin went to work on it. Uh, we just... What did you do? We made an adjustment. First of all, it's setting the regulator, it's 140 bar. Okay. The second regulator is, uh, as far as I understand, it's open because it gives the same pressure as the tank has. So they opened up the front rack. Yeah. We just talked about it in the Maverick yeah. video. 30 yeah. to 40 bar difference is ideal, but you opened it up. Yeah. Interesting. In, in our case, it gave the best result. We tried different uh, setups. So 140 on the back, yeah. wide open on the front. Right. Then you're then sort of mi minimum minimum tension on the valve. Okay. Uh, and uh, what what speed? What talent? What yeah. caliber? Uh, project you use is critical. Okay. I shoot uh, GSP mods for defense, 20 caliber, 25 range pellets. Off the line. Four. Thank you. Four. Off the line. Not yet. Okay, the range is clear, go down and fix that. Thank you guys. Yeah. Alright, we're back. Safety is number one. It's true. So we we're talking about caliber, speed, and yeah. weight. Yep. Yeah. Pilot. So I've seen a lot of videos where people shoot 30 cal and it's very popular in the United States. Just before competitions, Ken Higgs showed just amazing groups at 100 yards and many other shooters showed just pretty close to 240 scores, so amazing for me. Uh, but if you take into account that I change air gun, if I change caliber, if I change uh, pellets I use, it's just straight way to lose. Uh, because I shoot my 22 cal, 25 grain GSB Monster Redesigns, mm -hmm. old ones, it's very important. So you wanted to stay with what was familiar, if I'm understanding yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. You thought you'd immediately be crippled going to a 25 or a 30, even though you're having, Absolutely. you're seeing other guys have success with it. Uh, every projectile has its specifics on wind drift, and wind drift in bench rest is the main thing you got to know and to handle with. I know this projectile perfectly at uh, velocities, it's about uh, 970 hits per second. 970? Yeah, 970. Okay. They're all writing that down at home. 970. <laughs> Open up the front rack. 140 on the back. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's my setup because uh, I know the wind rate of this projectile. I know that this air gun is heavy enough. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, barrel is good. By the way, barrel here is 700 millimeters. Right. 24 inch twist rate. So that's the standard, the one in 24. Yeah. It's not the heavy one in 18. Yeah, it's uh, STX, if I'm not, not mistaken. It's what? STX barrel. Yes, the Smooth Twist X Superior yeah. standard. It's the one that comes with 
this gun, it comes with the Maverick, it comes with the Dreamline, yeah, yeah. it comes I with the Wildcat. I think so. I think so. Yep, that's the, that's the one. Guys, it's my first to fix gun, so I may not know some mm -hmm. specifics. You're doing great. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think it's all just, I want to say a few words about the uh, advantages about uh, using this gun. And it's very important. Um, I practice, I call it intelligence when stress shooting. That means that I work every shot from the very beginning till the end. I put another pellet and again from the begin beginning till the end. That's why I can't shoot uh, like many US shooters do, they just shoot, shoot very fast. Uh, it's also a good strategy in this crazy wind when wind flares. Yeah, as soon as it comes yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we've got to take into account that this power plenum is large and it takes time to fill it. Yeah. And when you make fast shooting, mm -hmm. pressure goes down, 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 mm -hmm. and earlier or later you get your pellet out of its accuracy speed, accurate speed, and it will go down. Speaking of that, I wanted to ask because I haven't reviewed this gun. What's the time delay you're seeing? You cycle, you fire, how many seconds are you seeing? For that big plenum at to least three. fill its lungs and be at ready least, to go. At least three seconds. Three, four seconds is safe. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And uh, so the advantage advantage is that I don't have to take my hand from the grip during shooting. Mm. I don't have to take my shoulder from back pad, mm -hmm. and I don't have to take my eye from the scope. Why is that important? That's important because I don't have to. Th those are critical things: how you handle the grip, how you put the gun to the shoulder. And Everything. Yeah, and, <laughs> and how and how you sight in your scope. Mm -hmm. If we speak about, for example, that very tasty, I use it only in single shot mode because I've got scope with 34 tube and uh, no rings exist. Scope rings. What rings are those? Oh, that's Russian military Didal. With ah. 30 MOA. Didal? Yeah. Russian Didal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mil spec, military spec. Yes, and it's steel, it's not aluminum. Hey, the more weight the better, right? Yeah, absolutely. Hang it on there. By the way, yeah. if there's possibility to change this uh, air tank, yep. I, I would put heavy one from aluminum, not carbon one. Okay, so there's a 400cc, 232 bar aluminum option that you can get for this, I, I think is what he's speaking of. I'm Form speaking offense. about 500cc, 300 bar aluminum. Uh, I don't know about that one yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they exist and in Russia they use very widely. Okay. Because they're three or four times cheaper than these ones. Sure. Yeah. And that weight is good yeah. in your case. Very good, very good for bench yeah. rest. Um, I think it's that. That's I think you did good. I think everyone back home's probably salivating. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> drooling all over their notepads. And Nikolai, um, it's been a privilege and good luck out here this week. Thank you. Thank you for Thank sharing you. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Oh, yeah. Here. Here. I got it. How much high was it? You got a minute 30. I would, I would come down. Where did it hit out? You don't know how far above it hit? It's like, yeah, it came down on such an angle. I think it was just barely above All right, it. here we go. Maybe six inches above it. Here we go. <laughs> Perfect. I'll come back, we'll do the next target. All right. 
Which would be which Okay, Doc, let's get you ready to roll. The tiger. All right. Who's the tiger, bro? The red stripe up in the woods. See that white target? You can burn one into the dirt. Oh, you're coming here next to me. Awesome. Yeah, baby. Izzy Sabrero. So I'm grabbing as many knowledgeable guys as I can for you. Um, folks, uh, as you can tell by now, but um, Izzy is Team Sabre. They got about six guys now on their team. This is a new team they formed this year. This is actually Team Sabre, Team Donnie, Team Sunshine. I see all you guys kind of in there together. You work with Donny FL. Donny FL. Customer service. Customer service. Filling orders. Machinists, the filling orders. Yeah. A little bit of everything. Yeah. And he's tuning guns too for for himself and a couple of the shooters on this on a team. Yep. So I thought I'd get him to take us through his tune. All right. Yeah. Maybe um, we could start there and then we'll run the gun end to yeah. end. So um, what do we have here? Uh, Impact X, uh, it's not the MK2, it's not the whatever, it's the one that had the really skinny uh, plenum on it, but it's been brought up to specs for the MK2, so uh, MK2 I guess, if you want to put it that way. Um, it's been slightly modified, um, it has uh, some machining work that's been done on the valve block here as well, uh, some personal stuff that I've done to it. Are you, are you going to talk about it? Uh, I can talk a little bit about it. Give us what um, you're comfortable giving so us. So pretty much, uh, I smoothed out the the, uh, the corners in there, um, opened them up a little more just to get more airflow to reduce that bottlenecking. Uh, it is a 22 caliber. Uh, a lot of people are gonna, or a lot of you guys are probably gonna say, you know, oh, why would you do that? Why would you open it more? It's just a 22. You know? Great question. The, the better flow you got in there the less restriction and turbulence you got in there as well. And if you think about it, if you're, if you're pressurizing here and creating turbulence, that turbulence actually does affect the travel of the projectile behind it as well, after it comes out too. So if you can have a straight shot of air, instead of having it slightly turbulating in there, you know, it increases the accuracy a little more too. Cool. Um, I kind of learned that a little hot rod stuff right here. Baby. Exactly, that's what I was about to say. I kind of learned that uh, from uh, porting and uh, tuning on a uh, carbureted engine, mm -hmm. uh, big block engine. It's like flow in the heads. Yep, exactly. you get that flow linear, things yep. happen quicker. Exactly, and clean it. You don't get more fuel on one side than the other. So you know, we only got one cylinder here, but the flow does make a difference. No bottlenecking. Um, I'm running at 112 uh, bar on the regulated. Um, I got the segment gauges here. I do have an external uh, plenum as well on top of the power plenum. Um, do you know what this gives you together, combined CCs? If I remember correctly, it's about 680 CCs. Together. 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 Why is the power plenum important? They ask me all the time, what's your version of the answer? So my version is, you know, the more air capacity you have, you can bring the pressure down and you can dump that lower pressure out the barrel without having to have so much pressure trying to get the same velocity having a smaller plenum. Um, you know, it all depends. That know. circles back to turbulence. Exactly. Get rid of that, here's, here's a nugget. Get rid of that waste air exactly. behind the pallet or slug and watch those groups do this. Yep, and another thing Pro too. Tip. If you're not expelling unused air, it also make your gun quieter on top of our suppressor. You know, the suppressor does help. It does help strip off the turbulence, but you still get that small turbulence in the back of that bore of the suppressor as well. But the less pressure or the, the less air you're wasting, the more quiet your gun, and it'll sound a lot better too. Even without a suppressor, you can make a gun sound nicely if it's not wasting air at all. Absolutely. Now, is this an amp reg? Uh, yes, amp regulated. At 112 bar. At 112 bar. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. I want to make sure I'm but, uh, keeping up. Yeah, um, I do have the uh, carbon fiber shroud. Good luck, Nico. Oh, thank you very much. If you guys don't know who this is, I come over here. Step in, we're making here. a movie. Oh. So this has been from Pellet Shop. Yes. Um, <laughs> I met him uh, earlier this week. Uh, we've been talking a lot, but... Um, the one that you kept saying I never gave you, but they didn't yeah, give you it. Up the Circle back to us, Ben. They're going to kick us off here soon because they're going to start. Right, we got to get finished up. All right. So thanks, pal. Uh, I replaced the uh, the shroud on this. Uh, it is a carbon fiber shroud. It is tensioned. Where did you get the carbon fiber shroud from? I had to get a hold of my best friend, er Ernest Rowe. Ah. Um, I, I, you know, I asked him for a specific uh, diameter. I wanted the wall. 
Uh, so he came through with it. Uh, it's a three millimeter wall. The ones that he's normally getting is about 2.5. Uh, I just wanted the extra rigidity in, so, in there. So, um, Why is that important? It, you know, it makes it, it, it dampens the barrel a lot more, and I can crank a little more torque on there without having to de deform it internally. Um, but yeah, so. On that, he, on that jam nut you're talking about. Exactly. Uh, and so he got me that. I made this jam nut here. So uh, a lot of people have been backing up their suppressors into their carbon fiber uh, outer shroud. Um, I don't do that. Uh, what barrel? What barrel? They're gonna kick us out of here soon, so I'm gonna move you along quicker than we normally want. What barrel are you running? I'm running a 700 millimeter barrel, the Superior for the slug. What twist rate? Uh, that, is it the standard? The, the standard cover. slug, yes. So standard. one in 24. Is it the most recent? Yeah, the most recent. One, one. in 24. Yeah. So uh, that was actually gifted to me by the uh, FX guys, uh, and I was like, awesome. I'll throw it in there, and it's been shooting great. I've been shooting the slugs and pellets with it. Uh, what speed? I'm going at about 9.27. With the, with the, what pal? With the FX 25.8 uh, grain uh, pellets. And then on the slugs, I'm using the Nielsen 24.8. Brand is still cold, we gotta fix and the camera. And I'm getting uh, at about 960 with the lighter uh, slug on it. But I'm getting very nice uh, groupings on it. Interesting, as well. out to what distances? Uh, out to 100 yards. Right, awesome. Why two, can you want to turn your gun kind of, why two bottles instead of one? What's that all about? Two is better than one. You know, I get double the amount of shots out of it. So uh, with one bottle, I would get about 75 shots. So with two, I'm getting double that. Uh, and since I'm getting a lower pressure regulated back here, Y'all know where I'm still cold. I'm my uh, shot count with that as well. Um, I, I don't know if you saw it on Instagram. You guys might see it later on. I did set this up with four bottles uh, <laughs> earlier this week. Where do they get these adapters for that? So these adapters are from Sabre Tactical. Sabre Tactical. <laughs> and the uh, chassis? And the chassis is Sabre Tactical. The butt sock is Sabre Tactical. I got a Sabre Tactical uh, cheek riser. What is Sabre Tactical uh, cock and block ambidextrous uh, for you guys that are lefties or ambidextrous or right handed. Um, and then up here I got my uh, customized Donny FL Koi. Um, is that I, what that is? That's what it is. So it's a koi with a carbon fiber shroud. Yeah. Okay. So instead of having the aluminum tube on there, it's a carbon fiber tube on there. 22 uh, caliber gun, 22 caliber moderator, or did you plus size it? 22 caliber moderator, since I know that this gun is shooting pretty straight out of the barrel and it's not offset, mm -hmm. I can put directly 22 on there and it does amazing. Um, you know, we do recommend going up one caliber if you have a shrouded gun that has a floating barrel inside. I normally do, on uh, everything. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a good practice, you know, it, it's, uh, I would say it's like a insurance for you, you know, you're not going to damage your suppressor by doing that. Yeah, or cause turbulence around yeah, the Exactly. Pack. So, um, that's what that is, and I just made that so it matches this barrel as well. So, I think it's a nice bit, especially with the machining that I did on it, just to bring out the diameter. It blends in very well with that piece and along with the other little uh, metal pieces around. Uh, I do have full titanium screws on this. I don't know if you guys can see a few of them on this side. Uh, these are titanium, those are titanium. All these back here are all titanium. And the reason I did that, you know, we're from Florida. Mm -hmm. It's humid, salty environment. You probably have a bunch of rust on your screws. No, mine look good, oh, but oh, well, uh, I, threw, I go through guns like Snicker bars, Snickers yeah, bars. So I noticed when I moved from Arizona, you know, Arizona is very dry. There's no humidity. I had zero rust on it. As soon as I moved out to Florida, I started seeing rust build up on it. I was like, ah, I'm not going to have this. So I replaced all my screws with titanium. Um, another thing, too, speaking of titanium, I'm going to turn this up and around. Yeah, show them whatever you want. Just keep your muzzle in a safe direction and you'll get yelled at. So this here is also a titanium barrel housing. Okay. Uh, titanium caulking lever as well. I got this from Ernest Rowe as well. So these aren't pro these aren't products that are available on the Correct. market. Correct. These this are is, this is in-house in skunk works. Yep, exactly. Um, Deep FX stuff. Exactly. Um, and then uh, other regular stuff. Uh, Titan uh, element scope, FX no limit uh, scope rings, segment gauges, digital. Um, what do you stuff. like about that segment? I like everything. Um, it he likes it all. I like it all. Uh, it, it's very. Um, you can program it. Uh, they do have a programmer. You plug it in, and you can actually set parameters. 
on it to where if you reach a certain level of air pressure, um, it, 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 it flashes the screen at you. Um, but it also tells you your shot counts left over. It also tells you how much air you're using per shot. So it calculates every shot that you're doing and it tells you about how much shots you got left. And it's been very accurate. It's been within two to three shots before I actually get to my regulator pressure. And what I thought was interesting is that when I compared mine to the Wicca, which is, I mean, that's as accurate as you can get commercially. Exactly. Globally, um, they were like within one bar of each other. Exactly. I thought that was super cool, yep. which made me feel really good about these segments. Yeah, one thing about it too, and I, it's what I love, is when I make very small adjustments on my regulator, mm -hmm. you can see every single individual bar. One bar. One bar, and, and, yeah. and it's amazing. I, I love it. Yeah. You know, I uh, love how you can see like you'll cock it and shoot it, yep. and it'll and go up to like 131, 132, and then as that cool as that plenum air cools down, it'll be like 131, yep. 130. You yep. know you're so, good. So what I do, so you know, cool. these bottles are filled up to 250 bar. I fill them up to 260, and once they cool down, they drop down to about 250 even. That's, that's what I do. I usually run yeah. them up like so, that too. That's what I They're do. Always fussing at me. You overfilled it. You yeah. overfilled. It'll come back down in a few yeah, seconds. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do have a few other accessories. I I do have the uh, uh, Saber Technical Bench Monopod as well. Uh, the Accutech, one of my other favorite accessories. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of these. It's yeah. the BR4 G2. Yes, it's Why? a wider stance. Why uh, it, it's a wider stance. Uh, so if you guys can see this, yeah, I'm gonna do this and. Yeah, you see how wide that is. That's about 12, over 12 inches of diameter here. And now that's about eh, 16, 18 inches in diameter there. Uh, and if so, he throws this lever here, uh, yeah. he can angle the gun uh, in that you cradle. You can rotate it. Yep. And if you're at an unlevel surface, you can also... Accutech's going to love yeah. you for this, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, ever since I started out, it, I have three Accutechs. I started out actually with an atlas you know they're pretty good but once you start getting into heavier stuff on your gun that starts getting weight things start flexing here and there and it, then your accuracy goes down because you're moving all over this here is solid uh, super solid they're awesome now they're about ready to get going here yeah. so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to funnel us to a close here gotcha. anyone new wanting to come out and compete here what advice do you have for them you know Come out here with an open mind. You know, I, this is my first time out here. Um, I, I know those people out here that are way better shooters than I am. You know, I did pretty good on some areas. Some areas I did eh, not so well. But you know, it's meeting the new people around, seeing new faces, putting names to the faces that I've seen on social media or over the phone through Donnie FL. Um, you know, it, it's awesome. It, it's just a big family out here. It's an extended family from my family at home. Um, everybody's pretty cool. Aren't they? Everyone is pretty cool, very nice. Uh, everyone here is willing to help you out. If something's going on, right away they jump in and they say, hey man, what do you need? Right away, everyone's here to help you out. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, but yeah. Um, what are you shooting out here? What disciplines? I am shooting the Slug Challenge, uh, Standard Power, the Speed Challenge, and the RMAC 100 Bank Trust. Uh, and the Bank Trust is what's actually going to be set up right now behind us, uh, which I should be coming up over there soon. So, um, yeah. Right, we're um, going to close it out right now because they yeah. just started. And we want to be respectful for them. Awesome. Izzy, thank, thank you very you much, so brother. much for teaching them. Awesome. Good you, luck. See you guys later. Nobody's going to say you're on your own today. I promise you that. So that's that's not what this is about. So um, learn from learn from everybody. Enjoy enjoy the time. Um, you know we have always had a really good environment here at RMAC. Um, you know you always see you know people high five and having a good time and congratulating everybody. Uh, we, we definitely don't want that to change. So um, we want everybody here to have the best experience they've ever had, and we want to improve on that every time. So. Hopefully we can achieve that. Um, we'll go over some of the different courses we introduced them throughout the week.
Hi. <laughs> Guys, we're here with Ken Hicks, who's, how should I put this, whose winning record is too long for me to even get into here. Long and short of it is, over the last five years, he always seems to be in the money in a lot of different disciplines, and um, you've really kind of, it's been in the top one, two, and three in a lot over the last five. And last year, 20, no, 2019, we got to get that right. He took second in the extreme bench rest, 100 yard. So um, this is another guy we can learn a lot from. So I've asked him to take us through his M3. As you can see, it looks and is a little bit a little bit different. But before, if they don't know you, Ken, um, you've got a, you're a successful business owner. The air gun community loves you. Uh, you're doing a lot of great things. But before we get into that, what have you been? Just talk a little bit about your winning record. Give them some context. Basically, uh, I've been shooting air guns since uh, eight years old with the 880, and uh, been off and on shooting. And you know, and had started making a family as I got older, so he got kind of put on the back burner. So as the kids got older, I started slipping back into it and got caught up with the local club doing 25 meter bench rest, and, uh, and the bug got me again. And I'm the type of personality is you know, I just don't do one step in, I jump in head first and try to be the best I can at it. Ken just came off from uh, came off from came off the line from shooting so he might be a little worn out. But your success in 2017, 2018, 2019. Yeah. You got, can any of those come to mind you can rattle off? No, uh, I've I've gone all all over the world. I've you know shot in Slovenia, England, Germany, uh, all the local national events, uh, Salem, New York, uh, Phoenix, Arizona. I usually, I usually bring a couple of medals home. 25 yard, big bore, 100 yard. It's just, yeah, just any, a, anywhere from 50 caliber to 0.177. So you're just a guy I wanted to get in front of them because you're a wealth of knowledge and we're going to get into all that. But um, you're the owner of Southern Precision Air Weapons. So if you guys have never been able to put a face with the name Spa, this is it right here. This is your guy. He's a, a very renowned air gun tuner as well in our community so he knows his junk so what do we have here Ken uh, this is my personal strictly built for a hundred yard competition it's a FX M3 30 caliber sniper and it's, it says highly custom and accessorized um, walk down through it yeah so you began with an M3 impact right what caliber uh, 30 caliber 30 caliber I and call it, uh, Call him our Iron Man. The, the color scheme is Sarah coating. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you know, everything internal is factory on it. Uh, the gauges, I got the segment gauges, are you know aftermarket. Let's talk about that. Let's kind of break it down. Okay. So segment gauge, digital pressure gauge. Yeah. You offer those. Yep. Okay. Um, I recently reviewed it. I have a hard time keeping them in stock, but yeah. The Maverick, they are there. I can tell you what, when I was tuning that Maverick. Yeah, they were gone. Uh, <laughs> it's just a hugely valuable. Everyone wants to run them up front to see what the bottles do, and I found it really, really valuable in the back. Tell yeah. me exactly what that reg's doing. But yeah. speaking of that, so you're running a 30 cal. What weight, what grain are you shooting? Uh, the 44 grain FX pellets. Okay, the 44 grain FX. What velocity are you pushing them to? They want to know that. Is that top secret? No, not really. I'm not a real big speed demon. It's about 875, 880. Okay. Um, is this the uh, standard Superior X liner or is it the heavy? That's actually 
That's a liner that I've been using since Arizona. So that's the, the original that's Smooth the Twist X? Original STX. Cool. So that's smooth bore, little twist, twist at the end. No, it's not no, it's not the it's not smooth twist, it's the, the first, very first first twist. one. Yeah, first first generation of liners. Alright. And um, what's uh, what's the foot pounds roughly? Yeah, 75. 70, yeah, 70, 75. Alright. And I guess you want to just go end to end and take them through it? I sure. see some funky stuff going on up here. Yeah. What's that all about? Well, out here on the end, I got uh, the Don FL Shogun. Uh, I've been using that same moderator for about three years, three, four years now. And just been really good luck with the 700 millimeter combination. Before you move on, can I ask you some stuff about the moderator for them? Yeah. Is it a 30 cal moderator or do you like the plus size at one? For some room around the pallet. Uh, it started out as a 30 caliber and a little bit of machine work that I like to do on the inside and kind of change up the air exhaust on it a little bit. Settle, settle but, it down around the pallet a little some? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a... I mean, at the end of the day, it's a 30 caliber monitor from the get-go. Okay. I just, I, I altered the monocore system on it a little bit. Do you run it to make it quieter, or do you run it to give you a performance advantage of some uh, sort? Oh, strictly performance. I, I could care less of how loud it is. Cool. Yeah, okay, so this behind it? Uh, that's the new uh, barrel turn, uh, barrel tuner effect from FX that Chris Turk and uh, FX got together and, and uh, got it going. And I, I must say, I'm... I'm I'm really impressed with it. How does it work? It makes sure it's fuck loud. So oh, it works with up. the harmonics of the gun. You know, it's it's, it's weight. It's got a eccentric weight on it. So basically, when you turn when you turn it, it's changing the harmonics of the of the of the gun. And you know, and with these guns, everything. I mean, they're accurate from the get go. But once you hone in on them. Harmonics, it just it just takes it right over the top. So it's a tuning tool yes. to dial in your accuracy, basically. Yes. And, so know, how does it work? Uh, how I got this one, like I said, this gun is strictly 100 yard gun, so I was tuning it for groups at 100 yards. So basically, you start out with the zero and you shoot five shot groups, and you want to do this in the best calm conditions that you can. And you just go down five shot groups, turn it, five shot groups, turn it. And you see the manipulation it does to the pellets uh, in the far as grouping. And you just, you know, you find that right setting and don't touch it. What is it doing? Is it like moving up and down the barrel yeah. or is it a tightness well, thing? Or? Well, yeah, as you, as you loosen it or tighten it, the weight of it's going up and down the barrel. Plus, and, and if, I, if I remember right how Chris explained it, it's, uh, it's heavy on one side than the other. So you're manipulating the weight from side to side and front to back at the same time. So you're literally changing the harmonics and the frequency of the reverberation yes. throughout the gun. Yes. And uh, I, you know, it, it took me probably 30 minute, 30 minutes at getting up at three o'clock in the morning when there's absolutely no wind out shooting at a light and got this thing combed in. And I literally put a whole magazine at 0.65 an inch at 100 yards. And you attribute a lot of that to this? Absolutely, because before I was doing the crazy eights, mm -hmm. I was running around the eight ring, and you know, every now and then I'd get nip the ten. Mm -hmm. But I was running around the eight ring, and that just it just totally wow. eliminated. Super cool! What a great tool. Speaking of cool, how much does this gun weigh? Uh, it's just a, just a nip over twenty five pounds. <laughs> Do you want to kind of turn it sideways so they can see the top profile, yeah. and then talk a little bit about what what all of this is here? So. So basically, these are just big bolts, and I turned them down, and I, I used them for the weight. And a lot of the F-class shooters, you know, the guns, they'll have like 20-pound, 40-pound weight classes. Well, there's no weight classes in air guns, I'm aware of. So that, that basically keeps my reticle from bouncing around. It kind of smooths up my transitions from, you know, from the cider up to the top of the car. Um, and I'm not sure because I kind of did this a week before I left for Utah, but it, I want to say it's contributing with the, into the harmonics as well. Just for the fact is, I had this thing tuned in before I added the weight. I added the weight and it just blew my barrel tune out the window. Really? I had to totally go back and retune the barrel. So it, ma so it matters. So, what you hang so on your it, gun matters. What, and where? It's, yeah, it's manipulating harmonics. 
whether I'm, you know, reverberating vibrations out similar to competition archers mm -hmm. that have the, the fluid dampers. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely something I'm going to spend a lot of time in the future to play with. Develop it. As far as being voting it mm -hmm. and being able to manipulate the, throw, the length of throw. And it looks like. So his bees are all over. It looks like he just hung it on the side rails, the OEM side rails, and used like some kind of scope mount. Yeah, I used the 34 millimeter FX No Limits. <laughs> cool. And this torpedo thing down here? That's just more ballast. Uh, solid piece of brass I've been using for a couple years now for different things, and mm -hmm. just more uh, more weight added to the rig. Okay. And this is an M3, so it has a regulator in the front. It has a regulator in the back. Yeah. Are you comfortable talking about your reg set settings for them? Oh, sure, sure. Um, you know, as a tuner, I, li I like to have my final reg high, just for the fact is I get a lot more response and feedback from the from the hammer spring tensioner fighting against the higher regulator pressure. So I got that. I got this one set at like 145 in the back. Mm -hmm and like 175 on, in the front. So a 30, 30 bar differential? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I reconfigured the front washers a little bit different, something me and Ernest have talked about and like how the results that we're getting. If they don't know who Ernest is. Ernest Rowe, he works, you know, everybody knows who Ernest <laughs> is. But, Ernest, um, Ernest is a lot of the brains behind but I, uh, uh, I, FX R&D basically, we here feel, in the States. We, we feel like we've improved that front regulator performance just just not adding any washers, just changing the stack configuration on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just makes it more responsive and, and fills up this back plenum a little faster. Back to that where you like, so you like to run a higher reg pressure, kind of make that valve work a little bit harder? In well, the back, not, is that what you I mean, saying? not necessarily. I'm just getting more feedback from you because I'm fighting that extra reg pressure. So you feel like it's like almost like a higher resolution. Right. And if I got the little higher rate pressure in the back, I'm getting a quicker snap close, snap back close. Mm -hmm. And about how many seconds between shots are you at those settings to fill up that power plant? I, the, that, 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 that group that I did at 100 yards, it's a little over a half inch. Mm -hmm. Basically rapid fire. Wow. Just ch -ch -ch -ch. And I, I thought the gun was, I thought, I thought I was totally missing the target. Okay, so it was doing its job breathing. Yeah, yeah. It's just the whole time I'm rapid firing, and that's that's my shooting style at 100 yards. Mm -hmm. I rapid fire on the on the sighters, mm -hmm. then I you know once I see where they're at, I jump up and pop a couple off. On top. Is that because you're trying to keep you're making sure you're firing in the same wind basically? Yes. Yes. So that doesn't change on you with your yeah. adult. Yeah. I mean basically. I hold dead zero on the on the cider, and if it's grouping off to the left a little bit, I jump off and dope it to the right. To compensate. Cool. And I see you're running some chassis gear here. Yep. And some aftermarket saber in the back. It looks like. Yep. We uh, want to talk oh, wherever you want to start. I got the the saber Argus Swiss um, on the bottom here. Mm -hmm. This is the first generation. Um, I would have the other the newer one, but I've had this one seracoded, so I I just keep it like that. Um, ergo grip, which is full of lead as well. What, did you, um, what kind of lead did you put in there? It's got 177 pellets <laughs> in it. <laughs> I love it. They you got, you probably got about a whole tin in there, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, at least three, four hundred anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sabre Tactical Bag Rider. I will not shoot an impact without the bag rider. I, I can't stand just having this little bit on the back to play mm -hmm. with. I gotta have that whole area right there. Um, Sabre Tactical Adjustable Buttstock. Um, I like it because it just gives me a little extra throw for my long arms. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of a hook on there so I can manipulate my little bit on my, with my shoulder. Um, other than that... Can I ask you about your trigger? Like, you know, they're always asking me questions about trigger. Uh, Two pounds, pound and a half, half a pound. It's, a couple probably, of, it's like, probably a little bit like a half a pound. So light. Yeah, it's about a half pound to three quarters of a pound. It's not horribly light. I mean, I'm, I'm coming from rapid air weapons where you're talking ounces. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, these guys, you can't get them too terrible, too too light. But the biggest thing I do is I take the first stage out of it, so it's a one stage trick. Mm, single stage, lightweight. Yeah, very just interesting. One stage. What yeah. about? Um, can I ask you? I always look for good explanations of the FX's new power plenum. 
and what that does, what that enables the valve and the gun to do. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give them your spiel on that? Well, basically, this is your gas tank, and and uh, it, it gives you more on, on hand, more gas on hand to for that shot. And it gives you power. It can give you power, or it can give you extreme efficiency. But basically, it just eliminates it makes this a two system deal to where you got the air tank and then you got the power plenum and it keeps them separated so this is this is more of at a relaxed state and this is more on the high pressure side of it so the valve same way with the front regulator and rear regulator mm -hmm. but you got you got more more regulated volume right there on hand so basically it's all about on hand air for that valve right. to retrieve from so it can do what you're asking right. about right and the larger the plenum yep and Hypothetically, the more power you can right. squeeze out of it, because yeah. it's available as to long, the valve. Right, as long as you got enough weight to access. It. What do you mean by that? You got enough hammer spring to access that high pressure volume. Ah, so there's a lot. So you, can, you can get to a point to where you, I mean, you can have a plenum on there like this, and you're not going to gain anything. It's just because you don't have enough muscle to access it. So FX is dialed this into the right. spring spring tension yep. we got. Awesome. Accutech bipod? All day long. Talk about that. Why? Uh, it's just a great bipod. So far it's the best best bipod I've come across and I've used numerous of other brands that probably cost more than the Accutech did. And it's just true true blue dependable. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. You appreciate the weight? The added weight? Or is it more about the stance? It's more about the stance. I get the wider footprint, the adjustability, and you know, the hand. hand. You want to wrap up the gun talking about the scope a little bit? Scope, scope and rings and why? Yeah. So uh, this is an ATAC R 7 to 35 Night Force. Um, I, I run this one in uh, 01 MRAD. And I'm kind of an MRAD guy just because I like the, with the number, the numbers on the turns. And I get it's just what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, real nice scope and I use it. I mean, I, I like the I like the element line, and I told Shane Keller this too. I said I, I would have used the element, but I'll be darn, I paid thirty five hundred dollars for a scope, so I'm going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Shane Keller, if you don't know, he was an extreme bench press champion himself, and um, and he's one of the one of the brainchild. Yeah. Him, Matt, Ted, if I'm not mistaken, behind the element, which is financially backed by FX, FX Air Guns. So yeah. it's quite the deal. Yep. Yeah. So. And the, then the mount is a spur mount, which is also made in Sweden. And it's got the quick disconnects, and it just, you know, I, I could take this thing off and throw the scope out there in the yard and pick it up and put it back on here and, and the shoot competition. Is that an, is, that's not an FX scope though, right? The, or I, mean, I mean, excuse me, an FX. It's made in enough. Sweden, but at the time, I don't think FX had anything to do with it. It's kind of a standalone company. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk RMAC for a sec. I just pulled you off the line to spend time with these guys. What um, what are you feeling? What are you digging? And what ain't so great? Uh, it's, it, it, gets, it gets better every year. Um, the weather has actually been pretty good. It's nice and warm. A little chilly in the morning, a little chilly in the evening. Um, got a little bit of smoke coming in from California. And kind of feel it in the back of your throat. Uh, the wind, the wind definitely shows up. And dust, mm -hmm. everything's got a layer of dust on it. But as far as our Mac itself, I would never miss it. What are you most excited about? The award what, what, ceremony. The award ceremony because <laughs> because of the twenty was it twenty one? Yeah, twenty one thousand dollars. You hear that, guys? You got to get down here, and start competing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't be afraid to jump into pro class. No, that's what's so cool about this is it's hard to relay to them the context of what's going on about here. But it is a very, it's very competitive, but it's very kind spirit, spirited. Everybody's got a wealth of knowledge and not afraid to share. Yeah, the generosity among shooters from pros to beginners, everyone's trying to help one another. So it's absolutely, we'd encourage you to, uh, to come out. Ken, thank you for letting them take a peek into yep. your wealth of knowledge Absolutely. and for sharing with us your tune and your setup yep. and good luck this week man thanks man appreciate you buddy all right five tickets 
There's uh, sheets of 25. So, you know, pick your numbers, what you want, and see how many you want. Some spins on this one too on the big wheel. We're just not sure what the values are yet on it. I have it. You got it? Yeah. Okay. So do we shoot two cards? Yeah. Just all we do. So we yes. shoot uh, Thursday and Friday. Exactly. And then yeah. a combined score. Uh, gets yeah, combined. To the final. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Folks, <laughs> if you don't know Tom Adams, Tom, when he's got a firm grasp on his metal game, oh, yeah. he's the fastest guy out here. He's the fastest guy at the Extreme Bench Trust. You haven't been to Pyramid Art Cup yet, have you? I have not, but I really am wanting to go. I want to go this year. Yeah. This guy's like lightning now. He used to drink a lot of Coca-Cola. <laughs> but since you've been off the Coca-Cola, what I saw an hour ago, I think you got faster. It could be. Uh, I've been working a lot on my mental game. So like you were saying, if I can get out of my own way, I can really increase my speed. And I've really been focused on that for the past probably a couple weeks, maybe up to a month, and I'm seeing a difference. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling a difference, getting off all that sugar. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit less of the shakes. <laughs> I've been following this guy for a lot of years. Let me see, you got a second place in 2015. 2019, you got a first in pro class, yeah. in speed silhouette. And I find it just fascinating that your gun of choice is an all electronic Daystate Red Wolf. Yeah, yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. The the trigger mechanism is literally a button, so there's no spring pressure pulling back, which can be both, you know, a blessing and kind of a, a kind of on the negative side too, because I end up shifting. I call it shifting. <laughs> I shift so fast. Teach us your lingo, bro. That, uh, that sometimes I can actually outrun the computer. I gotta make sure I have a fresh, fresh battery. That and, I believe. And it's crazy. So I was practicing coming up to this event a lot. And <laughs> um, I kept out running my computer. So I said, okay, I gotta figure this one out. And I gave myself a count. And I slowed myself down mentally. I said, okay, Usa. Usa. <laughs> All right, so I want them to be able to learn about the Red Wolf, why you chose it. You talked okay. about the all electronic trigger. Yeah. It has an all electronic cocking arm, which is yeah. like if you've never experienced that before, you're not compressing a hammer spring. Right. You know, you're just flipping an arm past an electronic solenoid, right. so it's just flick, 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 yeah, flick, flick. Yeah, it's almost, it really is free floating. You have a spring in there, a little ball putting pressure on, but for the, you know, for essentially it's free floating, so there's no pressure back, no pressure forward. You're flicking it. There's a little magnet in there that holds it closed, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a little ball detent that holds it open. Mm -hmm. So, but that's easy to 
overcome, obviously. So literally, the only force is you're pushing that pellet through the mag yeah. and into the chamber. Yeah, and there's and, and then it. the trigger is second to none. I mean, you're. I, I think of it as, you know, get on site, get your site picture, okay, enter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like running a computer. It is. You know, when I reviewed this gun, I equated it. I've done a full review on the Red Wolf. I equated a lot to honestly like playing a video game. Yeah. Because it's like, because one of the funniest things is I, had, I was tuning it mm -hmm. for the tuning guide and I had it set up in the backyard and I was like, flick, I was doing shot charts and it's literally like flick, flick, boop, flick, flick, boop. I'm not even like on the gun. Flick, flick, boop. I looked up like 100 shots later <laughs> and everything's 25 <laughs> yards down range, like I mean, the size of a tic tac. You gotta watch it drill a hole through it's, every shot. Very interesting. It's just a very different experience, but. Um, I wanted for you to be able to take them through your rig, sure. Um, maybe sure. end to end, tell us anything about it that you think would be meaningful to them. Okay. And I know you know all the stuff they care about. Oh, yeah, so. and tell me if I missed something. So I'm yeah. starting with a zero dB moderator. Um, I don't. The gun's relatively quiet, 22 anyway. Uh, I am shooting a little bit hot, uh, but so I don't really need the moderator. But I like it, and I feel it that it adds accuracy. Can I ask you about Overall. that? Yeah, what's what, up? What caliber is the gun? It's 22. It's 22. So what what diameter is the moderator? Because um, some people like to plus size them, and some. And like... I do. I plus size. I think that one's a 25. I'm okay. Pretty sure it is. Most, oh, I think I only have like one or two 22 cals. Okay, cool. I'll <laughs> shut up now. Sorry, you're talking zero no, dB accuracy gun. Yeah, zero dB on there, and then the gun's pretty quiet. I've got the uh, the large bottle on here, so I can get plenty of shots. How many cc's is it? Uh, what's that? 580, I think it is. This five, is a five. It's five, a 580. You're right. It's a 480 and a 580. Uh, so, what's the bar fill? Uh, I filled a 250. Okay. That's, that's just me. Okay. Uh, it's 250 flat. Mm -hmm. Done. All right. Um, Go ahead. So Sorry. yeah. Uh, barrel. Barrel is whatever came with the gun. Lothar Walther polygonal. There you go. Yeah, for the red, <laughs> for the red wolf. All right, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you're good, man. Uh, let's see. Hawk Sidewinder scope. This is the new version with a little window in the back. Mm -hmm. I really like it. Uh, I like that it's got a little red white indicator on there, and I've been using that uh, through this competition. Uh, sports match. Are these the adjustables? Yeah, adjustable yeah. sports matches, and then I've got a uh, bubble indicator. Can we back up on uh, yeah, that? Because sure. like, there's so much like, there's so much like juice here. I just wanted to make sure <laughs> we get it all. We get it all out of you. But um, so we all know the Hawk Sidewinder from Ted Beer's days with Ted's holdover. I'll tell you. Something. And ever since then, I've loved the Hawk Sidewinder. Ted turned me on to it, and it's my favorite. I think it's my favorite scope. Of all time. Well, so I own like five or six of them. But I, what they may not know yet is this scope went through. A complete redesign from the ground up end to end that Hawk was actually like a year ago, less than a year ago. Hawk was actually considering calling it something completely different, but it had such brand recognition with Sidewinder um, that you know they went back to that. But can you h hang out more around the scope and tell them a little bit more about it? Well, I'm not sure what to say. I mean, uh, I love the reticle. I'm a reticle fussy shooter, so I could have a much you know, more expensive scope on my rifle, but I choose this because I really like the reticle. And I like what Hawk does where they have that open, uh, the open crosshairs, the little open box in the middle. I just dig it. Uh, so that's really about it. My clicks, everything has been on. I mean, just, just really on. Are you and a doper or a clicker? I'm both now. That's new for me this year. I've never clicked. Uh, I was always holdover and now I'm playing with clicks and it's really working well. So I highly can, recommend it. <laughs> and can you can you can you click dial with a hundred percent confidence every scope that's out there? Trick question. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, no, you really you just can't. No. And so it's interesting to hear you talk about how with this you have that confidence. I, I do. That was it. Yeah, I haven't absolutely. reviewed it yet, but it's, it's absolutely. Special. I'm I'm totally confident with that, and and that's kind of big because I've never been a clicker, and now I'm a clicker, and I have to trust it, and I am trusting it, and it's proving itself to work. So really cool stuff. Cool. <laughs> what magnification are you running? Um, I run. Depends on what I'm shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, for speed shooting, uh, I need a, a wider field of view so I can move to my next target. So I go to a lower zoom, somewhere between 12 and 9, depending on what the competition is. There's so a I'm nugget. Different. There's a nugget for you guys. Oh, it's a nugget. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then for 100 or more precise shooting, I'll I'll take it up max, just 24. All the way in, huh? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. 
Okay, sorry. Sports match rings, UK yeah. adjustable mounts? Yeah, and I got just a little bit of adjustment on that. Um, not too much. I just like to have my scope at that zero point mm -hmm. and uh, adjust from there. Um, other than that, I do have some customization on the bolt. Um, yeah, show them, teach them. Which, uh, this was customized by uh, John Bagakis. He's uh, part of the Day State uh, Red, uh, sorry, Wolfpack team. And um, I've only had it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very, very nice. <laughs> uh, I've only had it for about a week, maybe a week and a half. And really he was running with that last year, wasn't he? He was, yeah. Remember He's that. done a lot of work, and uh, he sent me one of these, and it's just really transformed my game. I was practicing. I had about 12 and a half second runs on a certain um, certain stage at home, and uh, it took at least a, probably a second, maybe a second and a half off. I just had a great idea. What's that? Should I, should I freeze? <laughs> no, you should sit I'm, down. I'm frozen. <laughs> Actually, we can't set the gun, but, but you know, just for a second, can you kind of give them a demo of how quick you can work that? And then, yeah, I can. Just don't point it towards the, the really Forge wanna, Pizzeria truck over there. I don't really want to say oh, in, uh, in the Raptors. Oh. that uh, I can outrun the computer. <laughs> That's fine. It is, but it is, dude. You're a freak of nature. Yeah. Um, <laughs> give us just a couple throws so they can see it. Yeah, sure, man. I'll, uh, Keep, so, it, keep it safe. For me, yeah, I gotta swear you to the camera. So a let me here, let me get this chair here so I'm down. Yeah. Having camera. So for me, I'm here and then just like that. I'm shooting. It's very slick. You're right here. You saw I made a mistake right there, so yeah. I know I can just oh, and fix it and correct an error. You know what's interesting about this is if you have a mechanical air gun, okay? You need this you need all of this leverage and you yeah. need that drop down arm up here to do this. But with this this guy where this is this is the cocking stroke, it's it. It's so cool how they can move this back. They should just yeah. build it like that. Because yeah. it's quicker. And I have done about five hundred to a thousand rounds a day. Uh, practicing up for this event. Yeah, let's talk about that. So yeah, um, sure. if they've never been Oh I remember five years back when we were all just kind of starting to come out here. Yeah. And yeah. I would encourage, even if you're brand new, come out because guys like this will help you. Anyone oh, yeah. will help you. I love helping new shooters. I love, I've had uh, shooters in my squads every day that are like, hey, I'm brand new here. I completely screwed up. I'm, I have no idea where my zero is, and I'm coaching them through it and trying to help them get back on track and get back into their own mental game. Okay, cool. Let's get back into it. Well, give us a good competition. <laughs> We're competitors. We love competing. You are, and you all are friendly too. But okay. <laughs> Circling back to that preparation. The preps, yeah. Yeah, like it, days before the event, weeks, months, weeks. what was your game plan? I, I would say, I'd say at least a month, maybe two months beforehand. Uh, whenever the Course of Fire came out for RMAC, mm -hmm. uh, I just studied it. Studied the rules, made sure I had the rules down right. I didn't want to screw that up and make my plan on something that's not going to be allowed. So I got that down. Course of fire, I can only replicate so much. I'm lucky I can shoot at my house. Um, so I replicated as many of the stages as possible. And can you take them through what what the events are? That, well, what are the events are here that you're competing in? <laughs> yeah. And well, we talk about distances, these kinds of things. Everything we've got out to 123 yards, and then we're all the way into 20 yards, and that's speed timed. No, that's everything. That's overall everything. That's slug and uh, you know, everything. Uh, speed is every five yards from 20 out to 80. So I set up all those. I doped everything out, which means to know my holdovers. And then I clicked everything out. I was out there for probably 10 hours doing nothing but making sure I'm hitting right where I need to repeatedly. Uh, and it really paid off. <laughs> <laughs> that explains what you meant with your, your both doping and clicking because in these speed events, do they work you from 20 out to 80 or 80 into 20? With, it's all over the place. Okay. It really is. You and you're be, standing, you're sitting. We you're have, yeah, we had one stage where we were standing offhand. Um, a lot of it was sitting. We had off a barrel. We had off some weird chair thing with a stick. It looked like a cover. barricade. <laughs> oh, I saw that, the little yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. shifter here. Uh -huh. um, so we had that, so there was some twists to it. And then the targets out there, my gosh, they're so small. Some of them are like really crazy small we're like really yeah okay. like, well, so let's show them like little uh, like liter oh, yeah. literally had, uh, let's see for kyl i think we went down to half inch mm -hmm. at 40 yards uh but then we went out to um what was this one 50 yards and we have a target that's only about that tall and maybe about that wide and it's on an angle so you've got 
a very small window that you need to hit. And what's cool about <laughs> it is everything is a drag race. Oh yeah, that's, that's what I think so cool. They're not. It's not. They're not sitting there with stopwatches. There's you, and then there's a man or a woman next yep. to you. And, and you're hearing them shoot, and it's tink, 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 and you can hear it as you're shooting. It gets in your head, So, don't it? so not this year. <laughs> You've been reading books? I have, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so you can hear the other shooter, and you can hear that caller saying hit or impact or whatever, and then you're listening to your own, and sometimes it even gets confusing. Like, uh, mm -hmm. was that my guy yeah, or hit, the other guy? Yeah, hit, hit, And yeah, so yeah, you yeah. really got to just pay attention to your game and know, without a doubt, you hit. Center of that target, no, no ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, but it's been it's been great, and um, I'm not used to shooting magazines either. Yeah, you were hand loading speed, speed if yeah. I remember at some of the yeah. other events. I, until recently, I was uh, almost 100% hand load. I a lot of times didn't even know where my magazines were. Does that have anything to do with Daystate having a brand new magazine? It this does. thing's freaking awesome, by the way. It is. It I is. could not break it. Yes. It was always true. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Much better than the original. It came with the Red Wolf. It is a huge improvement. Huge. Um, what did so, you put on here? A little grippy, guys? I did, yeah. Uh, the anodized aluminum is a bit slippery on dry fingers. So depending on where you're shooting at, you might be slipping trying to load this thing. So I found some sticky back sandpaper, and I cut little squares, and <laughs> Every little one of them. Yeah, there's another nugget. <laughs> you know what I wanted to ask you? What what 22 are you shooting, oh, and what's the speed? Because they're probably all wanting to know that. Yeah, I'm shooting the uh, JFB redesigns, uh, which are what, 25 green? Yeah, yeah. 25, 39, something yep. like that. And then, uh, what was I, at home? Or was it 2395? 2395. Yeah, 24. Yeah, yeah. yeah 2395 for the 22. Uh, so at home I was shooting, I'm hot. I'm shooting real hot here. Uh, eight, sorry, 989. So almost 990. Are they flying straight at 990? This gun is accurate, man. It's <laughs> the most accurate gun I've ever owned. LW owned. Polygonal. Okay, okay. <laughs> it is rocking. And it's happy, so I just leave it alone. Even though, like, like you, you're like, 990, that's fast. And I'm like, uh-huh, don't care. Gun's happy, yeah. I'm happy. Wow. <laughs> Don't mess with it. What, so, other, what other brands that you said this is the most accurate air gun you own? What other brands air gun do you compete with? Uh, none. <laughs> compete? None. None. I enjoy, what other air guns do you play with? I enjoy shooting some other day states, and then I also have a, uh, an old FX Royale that I just am really fond of. And I also got a Leshy L2. Uh -huh. Oh my god, that thing's fun. <laughs> Good that thing is ridiculous fun. Good um, stuff. So yeah, I'm 989. That's amazing. When I came here, uh, I got up to Crony, I'm shooting like 975. And you're from Colorado? Colorado and I'm around 7,500 elevation. What are we here? This is about 5,000 elevation. So you lost, you lost some mustard. You've got humidity and you've got elevation making a difference there. The density of the air. Does it still fly straight at the reduced velocity? You're still good? Yeah, it's oh. not a big enough change where uh, I'm going to see a big difference. And speed is out to 80 yards, so the accuracy, I'm not going to say it's not important, but it does have less of a factor because generally the targets are bigger. Out here, they kind of threw us for a loop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I want to ask you? This is it. So at 990, take us through barrel cleaning. What's your regimen? What, what are your do's and don'ts? One of the most okay. controversial top controversial topics. I added a syllable. <laughs> <laughs> controversial topics in air gun land. How often are you cleaning with scorch and lead through there? Yeah, well, it depends on how, what my next goal is for my next practice round. So I'm a big patchwork fan. It's all I use. Best seven dollars and ninety nine cent <laughs> oh you'll ever spend. So cheap. I've little, had little people. Bow stall. I've had, I did a YouTube review on Tomcat air guns, uh, and I had a guy come back. And say, oh, the, the, there's no way it's better than a brush. In my opinion, it's better than a brush. It's amazing. It's hard to believe, I know, but when you do it right, it's better than a brush. What do you use? What do you soak in your patches in? I just mix it up. I've got some a little can of Ballastol. I've got uh, another one. I can't think of the name of it. Uh, and then uh, I've also got a little bottle from Airguns of Arizona. They're, they're cleaning stuff. Uh, CLP. <laughs> CLP. Yeah. So yeah. I'll soak the, that first patch and I'll pull it through and I'll take it off and I flip it around so I can lose the backside. Backside's clean. Mm -hmm. Flip it around. Send it through. Depending on how dirty it is, and I've had thousands of shots, I've had some really dirty bath mm -hmm. So, another patch, soak it, 
and then I start running through and I, I always run them through and then I flip them over, run through again. I don't want that dirt to go back through the barrel. Oh, I do just like so you do. I'm just flip, I'll, go, flip, I was just thinking go. if I wanted to share this thing I recently discovered. So I do exactly like Tom does with the review guns. Here. Yeah, with the ballastol and it pulls a lot of lead out of there. Yeah, it does. But lately what I've been doing is I once I've run that cycle and, and I think I've got all the lead out with the ballastol, I'll put a little non-chlorinated brake cleaner, soak the pad in that, and then pull that through, and I'm finding that it finds even more lead. Like when I think it's done, that'll go in there and somehow dry it out, create some friction, and it'll start yanking more lead. It's a good out video. Of, out of, out That's of, another nugget. Out of those leads. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. how often, like, or do you just do, do it? Oh, when whenever I just feel like it. If I feel like the accuracy is dropping off, then I'll do it. Or if I've really run a whole bunch of pellets through, I'll just, I'll just hit it. Uh, normally at the end of the day, or if I'm switching from practicing speed to, okay, now I'm going to work on precision or 100 yard or whatever, uh, it gets a clean. So, but always at the end of the day, that way I don't forget. Um, yeah. So what would you say every couple hundred? I'm just curious. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't shoot know. at 990 with pellets. I'm just wondering how quick things go south. Yeah, for the past few weeks, I've been shooting 500 to 1,000 rounds per day. Um, so 500 to 1,000 lately. Uh, but yeah, it's... After a match, after 100 rounds or so, give or take. Okay. Give or take. I don't have a routine, which is surprising. You would think I would. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I really don't. Do you leave the barrel wet with the ballast all, or do you pull dry patches through? I generally take the barrel completely off. I take the shroud off, everything. I want to get to the barrel itself. Um, and then, uh, no, I just run that wet ballast all patch through, and then just keep going. Just keep going. So, you, but do you, when you're done... Do you leave it wet or do you or do you dry it? No, after I run through a couple wets, I start running dry patches. Okay, dry, that's dry, what dry, I was dry until it's until it's clean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, man. Super clean. This is the this is so, this is the stuff right here. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> From a guy who's been in the money. And it's a lot of uh, when I'm practicing, it's a lot of positioning and making sure that my rifle is set. I've gotten into a routine of no matter what stage I'm going to, I'm checking, is my turret right, is my windage right, you know, is my zoom right, everything, I'm double checking absolutely everything, and there's been a couple stages, with this being an electronic gun, you know how you have to wake it up, mm -hmm. and this one's falling asleep Safety on, on and they're like, open and shooter's right. ready, and spotter's ready, and yeah. they're about to say go, and I'm like, oh, wake up! <laughs> do, you, do you just toggle your safety to bring it out of sleep Yeah, mode? that's all that's I all do, I is I take that, that bolt, just, just tap it a few times, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. <laughs> Man, at the event here, so let's let's wrap it up just talking a little bit about RMAC. Sure. Um, RMAC is a lot of fun. What all are you competing in here then? I am shooting uh, small bore, uh, excuse me, small bore slug. Uh, I thought you were off the Coca Cola. <laughs> Wee! Uh, small bore slug. Obviously, speed. I am competing in a hundred, but I haven't put much focus into it. Um, <laughs> you're you're going to shoot this as well in the hundred? Shooting this in everything. I brought one gun to shoot with. What slugs That's did you shoot? Did you shoot? Uh, what did I shoot? The Howlers. And yeah, the howlers from Daystate. Oh, the Daystate howlers. Yeah, Daystate howlers. Yep. And the, I don't even. Do you remember what grain? Twenty. Twenty-two, maybe. Twenty, twenty-two. Okay. Um, and I don't change my setting. I leave it on high. So they're ripping out of the barrel at over a thousand feet per second. I think ten thirty or something. Like that. And they're going straight. They're going straight enough to where, when I was practicing, I hit. Uh, flower this big at 170 yards. That's straight. I hit, <laughs> yeah, I just doped in end of the day and I'm like, oh, let me see if I can do this. And I hit some pedals and then I missed. And then I nailed that thing, came right off the stem and held it perfect. Wow. And uh, yeah, then I jumped up out of the chair and mm -hmm. hooray and went home. <laughs> Done. <laughs> so yeah, they're shooting super straight. I've actually hit a pine cone 275. 275. <laughs> this gun has been good to you. On purpose. Yeah, it's really been good. Um, it's tuned well. It's just doing its job. Can I ask you something? I've been asking a lot of the other shooters this, because this is something I'm talking about more and more to try to dispel some myths. But um, is your gun hold sensitive? Does it matter how you shoulder it, cheek it, where, where and how you grip it, how you work through the trigger? Every gun is hold sensitive. Every gun is. I, I, it doesn't matter. Every gun is hold sensitive. <laughs> and it, it does matter. Um, and I find that... Uh, through reading books on shooting and, and changing myself and you know mentally um, I've been holding I've been really focused on my hold which I think is good mm -hmm. and I have to get away from that I have to trust that I can hold the rifle right 
You mean to where you're subconsciously myself, doing it? I've taught myself through tens of thousands of speed shooting that I'm more accurate if I speed shoot, even at 100 yards. So stop thinking about holds and just send it. Trust that you can shoot and go with your instincts. That's cool. Uh, yeah, that electronic trigger. Where kind are you of backwards. <laughs> no, no, it's just it's interesting. Like it's like because I'll get out there to review a gun. And I'll shoot my group to make sure that, like, you know, I'm on target or whatever, so it looks pretty. And I always seem to do better there than when I turn the camera on. And I think it's because I slow down when I turn the camera on. And I'm more of relaxed in an autopilot when I don't have the camera on. Absolutely. Yeah. That's it. That's it's very interesting. Exactly. It seems like almost exactly what you're describing. That's exactly it, man. Uh, you're just more relaxed. And you're trusting yourself. You're trusting yourself as a shooter. And not overthinking it. And you don't have anybody, nobody's eyes looking at you or anything, so there's less pressure. Yeah, yeah. So it's great. Last question. Have you ever put a trigger gauge on that trigger? No. No. And I'm a slapper, too. With speed, I'm a trigger slapper. Is it a single stage or dual stage? It's a button. <laughs> it's, it's literally like... But do you have a first stage turn. on it? Uh, no. 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 You just touch it and it goes off. I just slap. Cool. So very, very light. Very light. So some people who just got one, I was talking to, and he was like, man, I touched that trigger, and like I had fired off three shots before. I, it's like I didn't even realize I touched the trigger. <laughs> yeah, you got to get used to it. But once you are, it puts all other triggers to shame. So, yeah, I'm having a great time with this rifle. So you guys know, you, you can get this. You can make it a pound, pound and a half, two pounds if you want to. If you want to. Half a pound. Yeah, there's a spring in there, I think. It sounds like the way you got it set up, you blow on it, it's going to Honestly, it's from factory. It's whatever it was from factory. Light. They, they ship those things like eight ounces. Yeah, I've never, eight, nine, ten ounces. It's never crazy. touched it there. So. Awesome. But I have tuned it back and forth a little bit, so that's me. <laughs> Tom, man, thank you. Thank you for sharing some of your secrets, secrets with us. Thank you. And thank you. Um, appreciate you. And, Good luck at the event this week. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking good. You are looking good. Damn, you're <laughs> freaking fast, bro. <laughs>